we just, this meeting's being recorded. Ron, um, do we have anybody taking minutes? I don't see Sharon on here. I did see her on a second ago. I never saw hmm. her on. I was just gonna ask the same thing, if you could walk us through the new personnel changes too. Yeah, so um, I got a, um, an email or uh, information that Gail no longer is, um, uh, she's, she's got too much on her plate. So uh, from what I heard, she's gonna be concentrating on the FinCom and the zoning board because the zoning board has a lot of activity with the SLV proposal. So um, we have uh, Sharon George is now our new admin. And Sharon um, comes has experience and comes from uh, Gloucester, I believe. She was uh, a town clerk in Gloucester. Is that correct, Sue? Or um, you know anything about Sharon George's history? She does, she does come from Gloucester. I believe she has years of experience as the admin, I wanna say for the Conservation Commission, but um, you better get that from her. <laughs> she does okay. have a lot of years experience and I forget the... Uh, the full bio, okay. but it is from Gloucester. Okay. Um, and I did see her earlier, but I don't see her now. I don't either. And I did see her on for a second. So maybe she's having technical. Sue, could you take over in the interim for a minute until she comes back? <laughs> um, and we have the recording. Okay, we have the recording going. <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, first item on the agenda is the, we want to just acknowledge the receipt of correspondence. We got a letter from uh, Ms. Ayavani on the 40A in Rockport on December 16th. And again, we received a letter from Ms. Ayavani on January 1st on 2022 goals. At this time, I'll allow any public comments for items not on the agenda with a limited time. Is there anyone oh. in the public that wishes to speak? Sorry, Ron. Um, I also forwarded an email I received from Mark Golovsky that was a copy of a letter sent to the planning board back in June or July of 2020, which I hadn't seen, but he since Laura has probably not seen it and it wasn't fresh in people's minds, I forward that along. Forward that forwarded that along as well. Okay, and the uh, reason for that was um, at the end of our meeting tonight, we're going to have a very short presentation by uh, Peter Gaudreau and Mark Glovsky on a, a matter up at the LCD, which uh, was not on the agenda, but came in late Friday, and I thought it was important enough for the board to listen to. Um, the, um, late today, I put a uh, slide packet of the presentation, three slides into the um, meeting folder. I, it came in late, so um, we're going to see it tonight, and then it'll be there for your reference. Ron, can I ask you a question, please? Yes. Do, can I hear you correctly that we need to kill a half an hour? Well, we'll see. We got a uh, A&R first, and uh, yeah, we have, we, well. You don't have to kill a half an hour, but I wanted, I might take well, things like out of order. I was just wondering, instead of waiting the whole meeting, if they're prepared, does it make sense to do it now? Um, we could. Um, I'd rather wait till the end, I think. Um, let's see how this A&R goes. And um, if there's time, uh, we can do that. There may be some questions on, uh, on the, uh, I don't want to, not stop, start the public hearing uh, late. They've been waiting a while. So let's take uh, the next item, the eight Skytop Drive ANR. And um, this is a, the applicant was Tom Miklovic uh, for John Costello and Alba Figueroa owners on eight Skytop Drive. It's a lot line adjustment. And with that, I will uh, get a brief uh, description from Tom. Is Tom on? Yes, I'm here. Tom, do you need to um, permission to, did you want to share your screen or are you good? Um, 
I'm good. I didn't have much to share. I sent um, to Sue the the PDF and dropped off copies in the uh, at the town hall of of the plans. But the the surveying work has been completed and submitted. And I was told this is the next kind of step of the process. It's a very very small acquisition, about twenty three hundred square feet. Um, in the the May former. I interrupt for just a moment on the process, Ron? Could we pull the plan up so that we're looking at the document as as it's presented? I can do that. I have it up. up. Thank you, sir. I have it up too. Um, okay. There you go. Uh, if I can rotate, well, but uh, can you see this? Is it too small? I can pull it up and rotate it if it's. Because I haven't downloaded already. I just think it'd be good to. Yeah, you can rotate ahead, it to the right of your um of the of the magnifying glass. There you go. There we go. Thank you. Yeah. So it. That's great. Yeah. So the um the checkerboard uh, type type pattern there defined as, as lot A. Um, so I'm in the, the property of uh, eight sky top and the current checkerboard that little triangle belongs to four sky top, which is Alba and John. Um, so we're looking to convey that from four to eight. Um, and it's within the, the new uh, square footage of uh, property uh, four sky top is still within the, the, you know, the minimum requirements. Um, and I'm not exactly sure what else to, to comment on. Um, pretty straightforward um, type of type of transaction. And um, yeah, are there any specific pieces of information that I should convey? I um, actually had um, Gary uh, Gilbert pre-vet this um, ahead of the meeting uh, and have him take a look at it. And uh, I will uh, ask Gary if you have any comments on what you've found or. Hi there, happy new year. Happy new year. Uh, can, can you see my image? Cause I see a black uh, square there. With yeah, that's what we, we see a black square. <laughs> okay, I, it's weird, I turned my video on. Um, I'd like to try to revise our application form for a and so that it makes things crystal clear, but just for the sake of clarity, could you just uh, state um, Mr. Miklovic that what your change in the lot boundaries doesn't um, doesn't render non-conforming anything about either lot in terms of size or width or frontage. That's correct. Yeah. So uh, there's no no frontage. It's uh, in the rear of, of each property. Uh, right. The, yeah. The existing um, square footage for the seller uh, is still well within the, the minimum requirement, which I believe uh, it's in here somewhere on the either in the notes or uh, one of the sections that kind of states the before and after square footage of, of lot four. Uh, but yes, both both of those were accounted for in the surveying work. Yeah, I just wanted to get that, you know, clarified because it'd be nice if it was really clearly stated on the first page of the application form we have, but someday we'll get there. Oh, so get um, with, with that all being said, this is clearly just a lot line of adjustment and it doesn't have any other effect. So I would recommend endorsement of the plan. There's no reason not to. Great, thank you. A question? Much. Can, Any can other questions ask? from Laura? Go ahead. Yeah, just wondering the purpose of the lot line transfer. Yeah, so uh, it's it's quite a, a hill, um, our our entire street, and uh, my my backyard abuts that lot A uh, on a flat hill. Um, for for lot four, it's about uh, eighty feet above the the foundation, so it's it's fairly unusable. But for our, for eight sky top, it feels much like a continuation of the backyard. Uh, so that's effectively more room for my little daughters to run around <laughs> if, if I'm putting it simply. So it is within the setback area. So there are no plans to build on lot A. It's just simply to add it to the backyard. Yeah. I, I see that I, the geometry makes sense to me. I just wanted to understand the, the plans for it. Yeah, no, no, no building. Um, no, um, possibly, uh, you know, a pool um, that, that would, you know, alter the, the, you know the lot lines and the, and the setbacks, so we'd have a little bit more freedom as to the, the pool layout in future years. But my daughters are still too young for a pool, so that's a, a dream at this point. 
I would just clarify that um, they have every right to adjust their lots as they wish. And if that means they can build in, in slightly different areas on their lot, that's also their right. So it's, it's, it's not a consideration for us in granting um, an endorsement to an A&R. Gotcha, thank you. Thanks, Yari. Yeah, just uh, looking to understand the reasoning behind the transfer. So that was helpful, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, any other questions from the board? Okay, I'll entertain a motion to approve ANR. Um, I'll move to endorse the uh, approval not required plan of land um, for number four and number eight, Skytop Drive, Manchester by the Sea, prepared October 22nd, 2021 by Hawthorne Land Surveying Services, Inc., scale one to one inch to 20 feet. And it's number 825, I believe. ANR, I just want to add ANR Eight, number add 8, 825. I second that. Okay, make, motion's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Take a uh, roll call vote to approve. Ms. Creighton? Yes. Ms. Delicio? Yes. Ms. Foley? Yes. Mr. Gilbert? Yes. Mr. Olney? Yes. Ms. Tenney? Yes. And the vote, chair votes yes. Okay. We're good. Um, the Mylar um, has to be signed, I believe. You have the Mylar? Um, yeah, I submitted the, the Mylar to the town clerk uh, a few weeks back. So that, that should be in the, in the session. Okay. So I will sign it for the board during COVID. We have signals, sig signature authority, and um, I'll get down the town hall and get that signed um, as well as some paper copies. Excellent, thank you. Do I receive any of the paper copies or digital copies uh, with, with signature at all? Um, that's a good question. I think so. Um, Sharon, no. Helene, um, well, Sharon has her hand up. Yeah, Sharon, go ahead on the copies. You can unmute. Sharon, you're muted. Okay, I have copies of the plan. I'm happy to send him a certified copy of the vote um, with a copy of the minutes. Thank you. And is, is there a signed copy of the actual um, plan that I need for anything or, or is it, it's all set? Yes, and I will give him also a copy of the plan. Yeah, so I will sign the mile. It got to be signed, and then uh, with a no, A and R number on it, and then you can take it down, registry right. or wherever it goes. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we still have fifteen minutes. Um, I don't know. Do we want to take on the? Um, the Peter Goodrow, are you guys ready or uh, should we wait till the end? I think we want to wait till with enough time to talk through it. Okay. Ron, it's Peter. I don't believe we have Mark. I told him that I told oh, him I'm the would be closer to 8.30 and I was going to let him know when we got close. I'm here. Oh, you are here? Yeah. Sorry, I didn't see you. No, I'm not very noticeable. I would, uh, the other people, we also told the, the folks from cell signaling that we would, that we thought it'd be late and I think they'd like to attend too, so. Okay, we'll wait. We'll Thank move you. On. Uh, we'll move on. I think recodification might take some time. Let's move on to the zoning maps update. Um, Sue Brown, uh, what's the latest on the zoning maps? Sure. I um, spoke with Priya with APTEO today. She's going to be sending me a scope and um, just a general outline 
Um, we agreed on 2000 um, for the upper limit, but she doesn't think it will take that. We believe that we have all of the, um, everything that we need already existing. So it's just a matter of formatting the maps and double checking and making sure that we're happy with the way that we look, that they look. Um, she recommended um, an actual eight and a half by, or 11 by 17 to put um, as a fold out, um, which would provide us some options. We may do an inset of the D1 and D2, just because that's the one that's smaller that might need some more, um, some more clarity to it. So um, I think we're all set. Um, I'm guessing that it might take a, you know, up till the end of the week, but I would, I'll share a draft and um, it should be, it should be fairly straightforward, but I definitely will share it with you to see if we have all the information that we needed. <laughs> it's available now online, not to map, but all the layers, but they're, 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 um, they're, they're hard to find. And they're, I just want to make sure that we have the right maps and right references for this new map. So, a little bit of homework, but we should be good to go. So, so would we would we be creating additional zoning maps, say, for uh, maybe in the future on this 40A um, uh, edict from the state? And would we be using the same people or uh, is that a possibility or? Um, sure. If when, once we have another overlay district, we'll have to create a new one, but we can't really do that until until that happened. Are we spending wouldn't money? Be part, wouldn't be part of this scope, but it'll be. Okay, do, do are we spending foolishly because it has to be revised again, or you think this would be? Um... No, I think I think it would be an, it could, it would probably be an add on just to one of the maps, but we certainly okay. should have a, a, a much clearer map or set of maps than we have now. So I think we're all good. Okay, any other questions from the board members on the maps? I had one. Yes, go ahead, Laura. Does this um, series of map include flood zone mapping? And if it does, do you know, it's, it's, has FEMA updated any information that we should be included or the state? Yeah, that's a good question. So we will not be putting the FEMA, we will not be putting that as an overlay district because as you know, that, that can change with FEMA's, um, with any changes that they make. So while it's referenced in the, um in our zoning bylaws we can't create a static map of it so that will still exist as a layer on a layer was what i was wondering yeah have, that people will have to refer to it won't be on the static map sure okay and does it is it time for that layer to get updated is that in the scope as well um no that's not in our scope i don't know how often that is updated if it's if it's something that um that the assessor's office updates annually, or uh, I'm not sure of the. Okay. I don't know how often FEMA updates, but I know yeah. that it's a, it's a yeah. backwards looking map, obviously, <laughs> since it's FEMA. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thanks, Sue. Yeah. Does Sharon have her? Sharon, hand up? you have your hand up? No, I don't. Okay. Just looks like it. Okay, any other questions on zoning maps? Thanks, Sue. Um, uh, blasting regulations update, Christine Delicio, where do we stand on that? So I, I saw Sue's update. Yes, I did talk with the fire chief for several hours and I talked to the author of the citizens petition and basically the fire chief is under the impression that everything that we need is you know stated by the state in their regulations um so i did some research and i came across the town of sharon and um it's actually mostly the guidelines for these blasting regulations usually fall under the department of health not under the planning board um so we're gonna have to figure out maybe how to adjust that but i have a document for the there's not very many guidelines within the state of Massachusetts, but I put them together. Sharon, um, there's a woman that's on the Sharon Board of Health. She came up with, I think, some pretty great simple regulations that 
incorporates several of the things that Sue identified in her planner's report. Um, I was going to share them with the you. There's some municipalities that have just maybe four lines. You need to abide by all the state regulations, pay the fee and give 24 hours notice. And then you have regulations or not regulations, yeah, guidelines that go 14 pages. I think we want somewhere in between. I was hoping for like a half a page. Just wanted to um, share. There was like six municipalities that I found. And I also found a document from New Hampshire that pretty much outlined our, our, our scope of what these guidelines should be. And those could include um, once we're looking at the site before they determine that they need to blast, if they can tell us in the original um, application, if they do intend to blast, maybe we would have some early on feedback, maybe to move the project instead of actually blasting, especially in some sensitive areas that may um, be near water resources. So I have six um, six municipalities. I was going to share the document. You guys can take a look and give me some feedback. Um, so you don't have a draft regulation written. You you were going to. I am not going. Some. No, I'm not going to write a regulation. Um, we've been down this road a little bit before. I just wanted some feedback. Do you want some simple lines to cover what the citizens' petition did? or do we want a full blown? I went and did some research. What I found was some towns have four lines, some towns have applications, sometimes have review. Do we want people to give us an application that we review it? The, the woman from Sharon basically had, um, she wanted four weeks notice, she expanded the blasting zone to a half a mile. And it gave the people the opportunity if they wanted um, it water tested because the blasting materials contain contaminants. So there was a pre and a post and the contractor would be um, responsible for some of these. So I need some feedback. I'm not gonna just start writing without some guidance from you all. Well, we're not blasting experts. Go ahead. Um, uh, Christine, did you, does the fire department have an application form? They do, it's a state form. Have they customized it or modified it for the nope, town? It's a, nope, every municipality uses the same application. Well, it seems to me if we wanted to, you know, customize it or add some points to it, I mean, the, the testing of the water sounds like a valid issue to consider. That would be the place to do it, do it all in one spot. If it's the Board of Health or the fire department that regulates it, um, just slightly expand that regulation. No, I don't think the fire chief is wanting to touch the form. I think what the citizens petition was, is they want the abutters to have more input and more time than 24 hours to be heard. So the current regulations require that there be 24 hour notice and abutters um, sometimes they can do these surveys before, and then they give the 24 hour notice and the abutters aren't necessarily uh, made aware of the blasting with more than 24 hours notice. So I think that's where the concern is. I really don't feel that the fire chief wants to change the state form. He wants this to be on the planning board. And I think the intent is to wrap this somehow up into our, um, special permit application if there is one did that make sense um i'm looking at the blasting regulations which is in section four of the general bylaw and it says in consideration of the safety and health of town residents no permit for use of diamond dynamite shall be uh approved um unless the board is satisfied that, that blasting will conform to the guidelines promulgated by the board for its safe and effective use. So I think um, the citizen's petition, I think we looked at this once before, and the citizen's petition is silent, if I'm, I, I could pull it out, is absolutely silent on notice to abutters. So I, I think that the issue was uh, PFAS um, chemicals, that the use of specific chemicals being regulated or prohibited. 
And so I think um, we need to, in my opinion, telling people they're gonna have it happen is, is fine, but um, we wanna regulate the act itself. Not, it's not something, it doesn't seem to me that blasting is something you get uh, input on from your neighbors if it's conducted in accordance with regulations, it's a construction method. But what is the, um, so it seems to me that the regulations that we have can say and shall prohibit the use of X blasting agent or shall, um, and that pre and post pollutants doesn't help us except to know that we've polluted something. <laughs> so let's figure out what the pollutants would be and prohibit them or regulate their use to de minimis quantities and leave it at that would be my suggestion. So I'm not, I'm um, to answer your question, Christine, I can't speak to whether or not we need a half a page or 42 pages. Um, I don't think we need 42 pages, but I think what we wanna do is if, if we have figured out what the pollutants are, then we should um, identify how to reduce them. And I think that was the intent of the citizens article. If I recall correctly, and I oh, can look I that, that is definitely part of it. But I think um, the citizens group that I um, spoke to, they wanted to make sure that abutters had a chance to be heard. And at this point, um, typically a permit is issued, and whether you need to blast or not is not determined at the time of when we're reviewing the permit. It comes up after. It could. So I guess that's how do we correct that? How do we make sure abutters are heard if they have concerns? Because what, right now, what the citizens group was saying is that all this is regulated by the state. You don't really have any say because it's so regulated. Um, but the point was to see if um, abutters could have a voice. Are you speaking, Sarah, or no? I said, that's not the language of the warrant article, if I'm... So the language of the article just says guidelines. We, we need to come up with that. We kind of need to start from scratch. It wasn't... I'll read it to you. In consideration of the safety of town residents, no permit for use of dynamic dynamite or other explosive blasting shall be approved for the purpose of constructing a commercial or an individual structure unless what I just... The, um, the board is satisfied that a specific circumstance, it will conform to guidelines promulgated by the board. So right the there. issue is we need to promulgate guidelines. Correct. And um, and it's for in the and it is for the safety and health of town res residents. So I think that we should just figure out what the what the chemicals are that are the issue. Um, and if there's safety that requires notice, then that's fine. So I'd like and then in terms of what next, I think it would be really helpful to have a straw uh, draft to see what what you're thinking. So in this, I have six municipalities and the one from Sharon, I think is the best, but I think we might have to join a few. So um, the document does have, have some red highlighted language that I think we should concentrate on um, and then we'll take it from there. So are you gonna share these with I us? Am. or are you, And who's gonna write a draft? There is or a draft. I mean, sh I think Sharon's language is, is, is a mm -hmm. good place to start. Uh, Sue, you have your hand up. I thought you had some chemicals named in your planner's report. So um, I did um, I did um, come up with a draft of of guidelines um, that I referenced in my planning um, planner's report. I I finished speaking with a blasting consultant today, and I double checked with the fire chief on on a few things and I uploaded to SharePoint um, late this afternoon, um, some draft guidelines. It's about a page and a half. It covers um, um, a, everything that I had outlined, but just gave it a little more teeth and gave it a little more explanation of, and it covers both things from everything from, um, you know, not allowing certain chemicals to testing the bedrock um, to see, a, check with about acid um, leaching 
um, and also notifications and presentation of a blasting plan to residents to so that we can get to the point where people do want to be here and they want to understand what the blasting is like and how it would be handled, how notifications would be given, et cetera. So I think it's a, a fairly comprehensive, but I'd be interested to know if Sharon had some other things that we would be interested in as well. So maybe it's maybe we could marry the two. I think there are oh. eight eight items that that, that is in SharePoint. We are on SharePoint. It's not in the meeting folder. It's uh, separate. No, yeah, I, I put it under. I think I, it's in the meeting oh, folder. Yeah, oh, I did put it in the meeting folder. Yeah. It is. I didn't uh -huh. see it there. I, I put it on oh. late this afternoon after I had finished talking okay. to the chief, which was later today. He had to rescue someone from an elevator today. <laughs> so, uh, Christine, you had volunteered to write a draft. Are you are you not going to? And we can get someone else, or uh, what? What's this? are you going to just share us the Sharon thing, or what's your what's your position on this? Well, I, like I said, I was trying to get some feedback right now, so I think I shared what I found. So, well, you got some feedback. So, then you put something together. Sure. Okay. Anyone else have any comments? I heard from Sarah and I think I heard from Gary. And you heard from I Sue. I did not have time. And I think I just need to reiterate that there was a lot of things that came in this afternoon. I don't know what everyone else's work schedules are, but I cannot take a look at things that come in a few hours before the meeting. So I did not see that, Sue. So I will take a look at that in the future. And if it's helpful, I'm happy to, I'm happy to take what you have and just blended into what I have. Um, and I haven't received feedback from mine either because so it's it's just out there for initial review. Um, I just wanted to thank Sue for doing that. And just to clarify, uh, Christine, we you weren't at the last meeting, which is when we had a conversation and Sue had said she would do some digging. So that's how that came about. Okay, great. Thank you. I just had a question for clarification for Sue. The the um, document that's in the folder now, draft blasting guidelines. What what is the genesis of that? So, uh, well, it's just um, from research um, talking research. with okay. the fire departments, and um, I did one some of the the one on the acid rock um, leaching. Yeah, um, it's, yeah. that was from um, that was from Connecticut. Um, is the only place that I saw that. And I did follow up with a blasting consultant today on, on his knowledge of that. And he gave me some good feedback and I adjusted that. Um, and then it the sounds like, Go ahead. Yeah. sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Nope. Um, the, the construction logistics plan that would, that every contractor would be required to submit to the town and would get into the details of means and methods such as blasting. Mm -hmm. It sounds like that's the thing that people are interested in reviewing and maybe commenting on, whereas the 24-hour notice of drilling or blasting is typically just to inform people that, you know, something that's already been um, agreed upon and an action is going to be taken. That's not the kind of thing that you can notify four weeks in advance because <laughs> you can't know four weeks in advance the exact date of the blasting. So right, I think it's sort right. of two separate things. Okay, any other comments on the blasting? Okay, thank you, Sue. Okay, at this time, um, I'd like to open the public hearing from December 13th, 2021 on the special permit application of Susan St. Pierre on behalf of Edward and Karen Crawley for a special permit under section 7.5 and 4.1.10J of the zoning bylaw to restore an historic seawall and install a timber pier gangway and a float on their property along Whittier's Cove at 94 Bridge Street. The board conducted a site visit on December 11th where the owner's representative and the applicant were both present. Um, at this time, I would like to turn um, the um, floor over to um, St. Pierre for comments and presentation. Okay. I have a, a brief PowerPoint presentation if I can show you yeah, that. Let me let me give you uh, co-host 
you're on. Can you see that? Not yet. Hmm. Okay, hold on. You gotta hit share. Hold on, let me see. Oops. Sorry. <laughs> Can you see it now? Not yet, Susan. Oh. All right, sorry, hold on. <laughs> Hit share. Here we go. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so uh, we're here tonight to uh, request a special permit. Um, I think the homeowners are participating in the Zoom meeting. I'm representing Ed and Karen Crawley, and they live at 94 Bridge Street, and they're in the zoning E district. And what they're seeking approval for is to build a residential, appear on the residential property and to restore a historic seawall. Um, I just cited the section of the zoning bylaw, that, which is the reason why we're here, is because the work that we're proposing is within chapter 91 jurisdiction, and your local bylaw requires a special permit for work being proposed, uh, any structural or use changes within jurisdiction. Um, this is the project locus, the, the lot, Bridge Street is to the top of the page, the parcels outlined in yellow to the left-hand side of the screen. Um, the, this is the main parcel here, and the piece of property that they wanna build the pier on and restore the wall is down here. As you can see, it's separated from the main parcel by the MBTA real line. They do have an old uh, historic right of way, it's called a farmer's right of way, um, that goes sort of in this location here and down on their neighbor's property. And they have a right of way across the MBTA line to get to their property down here. Um, that's just the parcel map. So here's the pro project locus, here's their dwelling, their home. Here's the neighbor's property. This is the way they get down to the to the tracks, cross the track. And it's a very small piece of land here. I think it's like 1800 square feet, but more than half of that is mud flat. Um, actually, while I have this picture up, if you can see this, these are old uh, remnants of the old warehouse that was associated with the historic fish wharf, fish flaking industry that was in this location here. And this is Whittier's Cove, T uh, Tax Point is over here and Norton's Point is in this direction. Um, this is a bird's eye view of the, the historic seawall that we're proposing to repair. As you can see, a lot of the boulders have fallen onto this upland area, which actually is salt marsh. Doesn't look like it, but it is. And then a lot of boulders have fallen into the coastal beach mud flat. So what we're proposing to do is to take these boulders and put them back and uh, restore the wall as it was a dry laid seawall. Uh, here's another view looking towards um, Norton's Point. And you can see the remnants of the old fish flake wharf here. You can see some of the old piles and some of the old timbers that were part of that, that wharf there. Uh, let's see. Oh, here's a view at high tide of the seawall and see the corner there. And here's a view at low tide. Uh, here again, you can see the right of way through the neighbor's property, how they cross the tracks and get into the site. Um, there's a lot to see on this map, so <laughs> it's hard to see, but this is the, uh, this is the parcel. So you can see a lot of it is mud flat. So this is the seawall that they're gonna repair. It's all on their property. They're very close to the adjacent property here. We're actually gonna have to go to the Board of Appeals to get some setback variances. Um, this is what we're proposing for the pier. It's almost 40 feet in length. We um, need stairs to access the pier because, uh, because of that salt marsh, we had to build the pier four feet off the salt marsh elevation. So it's kind of high, so we need stairs to get up there. So it's about almost 39 feet in length. And then we have a six foot wide landing at the end of the pier for loading uh, gear off and on the boat and storing kayaks and things like that. And then we have an aluminum gangway going down to a eight by 16 foot float. Now this facility, because 
the, the area, you know, during low tide is a mud flat will only be used to birth their, their vessels during high tide. They have a mooring out in Manchester Harbor. Um, so also as part of um, taking the boulders off the salt marsh area, we're also gonna be restoring the salt marsh area here. We'll be regrading back to the top elevation of the seawall and then planting salt marsh grass species in this area and along here. This is just a profile. Um, so we're required to demonstrate that we comply with the provisions of the, that the, the board issues special permits from. So um, the, si the site size accommodates the use, it's adequate room for a peer facility. It's a suitable use because it's adjacent to Whittier's Cove. So a pier adjacent to a cove or the ocean is a suitable use. Uh, there'll be no traffic impacts, uh, no adverse impacts on the visual character. And I think restoring the historic wall is gonna improve the vis visual character of the area. And we have no utilities. Um, and we do, we are gonna, going to be enhancing some of the wetland resource areas, including the salt marsh and the coastal beach. So in terms of required permits, it's always complicated doing things on the waterfront. But one thing we had to file was a notice of intent with the Conservation Commission. And we did that early last year, I think it was. And we finally got an order of conditions approving the project in August. Um, we need a, a planning board a special permit. And as the chairperson said, whoops, we did have a, a site visit in December. We do need to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals, which we plan on doing probably in the next couple of months. The reason we didn't go earlier was because um, you have to build whatever you're gonna build within one year and chapter 91 licensing sometimes can take longer than that. So we didn't wanna be premature in securing that permit. We just recently filed the chapter 91 license. And then we just recently filed the US Army Corps of Engineers notice of project construction. And that's it. Thank you, Susan. You're welcome. Um, at this time, I'll take any questions from the board. Go ahead, Laura. Just one question, Susan, on the required permits. Um, are there any required permits from MBTA for the construction in terms of not fouling the um, right of way since this is an active commuter rail line? Uh, not that I know of, but all the work is going to be done from the cove, from a barge. So we won't, right. be, we won't be crossing the rail line. We'll be crossing it, but you may still be, you're adjacent to the commuter rail line. So I, I just want to make sure that any permissions from the MBTA are secured if necessary. Okay, I'll check into that. Thank you. Uh, MBTA may have an easement uh, that it exceeds, that extends beyond the tracks. Correct. And they'll have rules that ensure that the lines can't be fouled. Mary Fowling. Hi, thanks. Yeah, I was thinking along those same lines, just kind of what the MBTA easements, um, I guess, language was. I mean, obviously, um, there's a safety issue with crossing the tracks, which is not part of this, um, not part of our permitting process, but. Um, I guess with the building of it and then with the ongoing use of it, kind of how that easement works and um, um, if we need to know any of that language. Are you talking about the easement that the owners have to cross the tracks to get to their property? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, did um, did didn't you need a review also by the harbor master? Was one the, the harbor ma the harbor master uh, said it would not interfere with navigation or impact any moorings. He gave us that report. And um, the building inspector, are you going to have to get a permit for what you're building? Well, I consulted with the building inspector regarding the the variance, and he didn't mention a building permit. But I can well, double check. I'll just say to the. I'll just say out loud that I, I just think that I don't think the planning board should be reviewing projects like, like this at all, personally. I mean, with all these other people commenting, the Army Corps of Engineers, Mass DEP, the ZBA in this case, um, and the CONCOM, there isn't much that I don't see we should be adding to this. It's sort of an encumbrance to somebody trying to do something fairly normal if they have oceanfront property. Can I make a comment on that? 
because I, I do deal with a lot of chapter 91 licensing. That's sort of my niche. Um, and most communities, what you do is when you file a chapter 91 license application, you file a copy with the planning board. The planning board receives it. And if they decide they want to hold a public hearing, then they do. This is the first time I've encountered a community that has a, a zoning bylaw that requires a special permit when you're doing work in chapter 91 jurisdiction. And it does, I mean, to me, it did seem kind of redundant where everyone else is looking at this and, you know, there's no traffic. I don't know. It's, if it was a mixed yeah, use development, I could see. My point is it adds to the convolutions of getting permits in our town, sometimes which are just unnecessary. They're not yes. really protecting, uh, if they're really unnecessary, unless there's a, a, a strong reason for, then we really shouldn't be doing a special permit review on something like this. Or as you said, some towns make it optional. So yeah. that's interesting to look at, but that's for the future. And it's not about your specific application. And I certainly would recommend that we um, pass this. Um, thank you. Any other comments from the board? Anybody well, in the I, would, audience? I actually would like to follow up with what um, Gary is saying. I completely agree. Can we make maybe a special note in our minutes to follow up with this when we talk about recodification? Maybe this is something that we need to relook at. Understood. Makes sense. Can any I move the this, Ron? Then uh, I would just want to take any com Anybody oh. from the audience with any comments? Okay, so with that said, um, we have a draft um, decision that's in your folder, um, which I asked people to review. It's missing a few of the uh, dates, but we can fill those in. So um, I would uh, welcome, um, if we're ready, if there's no changes to that decision or any comments on it that pertain to those two bylaws, I would um, close the public hearing and vote the decision as drafted. I'd be willing to do that if, if so moved. I think the draft decision has um, some uh, uh, the planning board fines and then it says XXX. Um, I'll pull, I'm pulling it up right now. Um, Can we add a condition that says NBTA uh, permissions, or is that appropriate? I think that's out of, I think that's out of our uh, purview. Okay. I think um, we're only obliged to section seven five and four point one point ten J. Okay, um, I'm finding that. So it says the board further finds no additional findings are required under section seven point five. Point two, and the aft formation proposed use to be in harmony with the purpose and intent of 7.5 and 4.1.10 of the zoning bylaw. Um, and I assume that is still, since we haven't heard back from the attorney general, the bylaw prior to town meeting, because then the sections all change. Okay. So I'll move the uh, draft decision as written to be uh, updated with the current dates. I'll second that. So I would need to close the public hearing first before we vote the decision. No, I'll move. Well, I'll move. Go ahead, Sarah. <laughs> I'll move to close the public hearing. I'll Is second that. Seconded? I'll second it. Roll call. Sharon has her hand up. Sharon, go ahead. Um, I will make the changes to the decision, of course, once we are finished with it tonight. Ron, when I just had, there was another edit that needed to be done to the um, decision. Okay. It's just yeah. that on page two, there's still it, it says chapter 91 waterways license, and then it's like required question mark. So there's just if somebody could go through and actually read and take out things that are not pert pertinent. On page two. Yes, yeah, so page two, kind of the middle yeah. of the page where it has numbers one through five. Yes. And number oh, five. Oh, in Light and Waterway license. Uh, that was from Bartoni. 
Okay, so let's uh, clean that I believe that that's up. a direct quote from the um, CONCOM materials. Oh, so that was a cut and paste from CONCOM. Hmm. Yeah. Right, correct. Um, perhaps that question should be answered then. Susan, doesn't it require chapter 91? Yes, we applied for one. So we just applied for one last week. Okay. It, it does, yes. So we could take out the word required then. Yeah, exactly. And then obviously question, you know, page three, there's public comment and there's just X's. So I'm assuming all that stuff gets taken out. Oh yeah, there was no public comment. So that'll go away. None, we can put in none. <clears throat> okay, so a, a motion has been made and seconded to close the public meeting, uh, public hearing, uh, Ms. Creighton. Yes. Ms. Felicio. Yes. Ms. Foley. Ms. Foley. Oh, I said yes. Mr. Gilberts. Yes. Mr. Olney. Yes. Ms. Tenney. Yes. And the board and the chair votes yes. Um, so um, now I'll entertain a motion to approve the draft decision as written. Moved. Seconded. I'll, I'll second. Roll call on approval. Uh, Ms. Creighton? Yes. Ms. Delicio? Yes. Ms. Foley? Yes. Mr. Gilbert? Definitely yes. Mr. Olney? Yes. And Ms. Tenney? Yes. Okay, Susan, we'll get something out. Thank you Thank very you. much. <laughs> Have Enjoy a good the night. site visit. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, at this time, I would like to open the public hearing for 189-193 School Street, Zoning Bylaw, Section 6.9, Site Plan Approval for Greater Than Parking, 10 Parking Spaces, Cornerstone Church, continued from November 22nd. The applicant has filed notice with the town clerk re requesting a continuance in two, uh, for this until our January 24th uh, meeting, which will be in two weeks. At this time, I would like to continue the public hearing on the special permit application of Cornerstone Church, Alden Drake for special permit under 6.9. May I have a motion to continue the public hearing for special permit? So moved. Seconded. Seconded. May roll call, Ms. Creighton. Yes. Yes. Ron, did you know, did you say? Did you say when it was going to be continued to state? Yes, time? Jan yes, January. I'm sorry, January 24th, 7 p.m. Thank you. Continue with the roll call, Ms. Delicio. Yes. Ms. Foley. Yes. Mr. Gilbert. Yes. Mr. Olney. Yes. And Ms. Tenney. Yes. And the uh, chair votes yes. Okay. Next on the agenda is, um, I'll turn this over to uh, Sarah and Chris on a recodification update. Time's a wasting. <laughs> uh, okay, well, uh, can I share my screen? Absolutely. Hold on. Okay. Um, so Chris and I have been working, Chris, feel free to jump in here. Um, we, as you know, um, as we talked about last meeting um, and uh, we've identified a number of um, uh, items for, um, uh, let's see, um, for um, work, for updating the bylaws, um, mostly those things that were identified by um, the prior work with Mark Bobrowski. And uh, there's a lengthy list and it's not everything that we would actually like to do, but nonetheless, we sort of decided to take some big chunks and hope that we could get them done. Um, I'll come to kind of a summary of them in a, 
back in a second. Well, let me walk through what this is. Um, and I know I put some things in, I'll, I'll tell you where they are on the SharePoint. You, a few of you have had a quick chance to look at them. We don't expect that you will have looked at them by now because we were updating them just even this morning. Um, but um, they're, they should all be familiar to us, right? The section one through four update um, that we talked about doing for the fall town meeting, although um, we wanna talk, there is some work there to talk about which of the Mark Bobrowski uh, changes that we did not advance, did not plan to advance in the fall, we should include. So there's some discussion there that I think is gonna take some time. Um, moving junk cars to the bylaw, general bylaw, um, seems to be pretty straightforward. Curb cuts to the general bylaw, also probably pretty straightforward. The issue there is um, who should oversee curb cuts, probably not quite as straightforward. Um, accessory dwelling units, um, that uh, work was, there was a lot of work done pre prior and that's summarized in the documents. The DPW has requested a stormwater update and Mark Rowski recommended that stormwater move to the general bylaw. There's nothing there yet on that. Um, Non-conforming uses, there's a nice um, new section that Mark Bobrowski proposed. Um, same with residential cluster. Um, the new administration section, um, oops, section 12 um, is what we proposed for the fall. So, so that should be pretty much done. Uh, we've talked about the LCD and we'll probably be talking about that some more later. Um, Adult entertainment was one of those things that um, we said we um, didn't have regulations and uh, and that we should to protect ourselves. So we just cut and pasted Mark Borowski's proposal. And then section six general requirements actually have a lot of very nice uh, proposals from Mark Borowski about review of special permits. So we did at the last second include something on that. Um, Chris, do you want to say uh, anything about the, um, I didn't include it here, the status of the um, state uh, downtown high de higher density, um, where that stands? Because we it's on our list, but I, we've sort of said hold for now. Yeah, in fact, we have to hold for now because um, the draft regulations for this uh, requirement that MBTA communities have uh, allowed multifamily in their downtown. It's still, in, they're getting comments. They're not going to issue the final regulations until June, which will be after the town meeting. And we really can't design whatever it is we're going to do until we know what the regulations actually are. So we're going to have to put that off until a later date. I will tell you a little bit about what the draft regulations say, just so you can uh, think about it a little bit. Um, basically, they require uh, that uh, a zoning district be established within a half mile of a train station that allows multifamily by right. Um, it does set density, which is quite low, actually. It's for a multifamily, it's 15 units per acre. So that's probably pretty similar to what we see at Newport Park or um, I guess Powderhouse. You know, we're not talking about high rise structures. Uh, the zoning district, this is one complicated thing, has to include at least 50 acres. And that kind of screws towns on the coast because we can't count the harbor as uh, zonable land. So we're stuck having to somehow make this thing work uh, with less land available. And that might be something that changes when the final regulations are promulgated. But um, so that's basically what we know now. Um, there's still a lot to uh, chew through. And so just keep it on your radar and we'll deal with it in the spring. Um, Sue, correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought the document documentation you sent out said you have to have a plan in place by the end of this year. Um, yeah, they are asking for you to have a plan in place, but a plan to create a plan, not the plan. Okay. They need to know what steps you're taking to get this done in a timely manner. 
And since it's taken them over a year to issue the regulations, <laughs> I think maybe we're going to be okay. Yeah. And for anyone who's interested, there is a webinar um, Wednesday at one o'clock. And if anyone's interested, um, it's just an update to those regulations. I'm happy to share that. Can you share it? Yeah. Um, I think we were going to want to comment on those regulations. Yeah. Um, yeah, Ron, could I add a couple things to that? Yeah, Mary. Um, just to get us thinking about it, because um, they have come out with, like Chris said, the, the draft regulations, and I'm sure there'll be some tweaking, but uh, for a community like ours with the acre requirement and 15 units per acre, they're saying a minimum of 750 multifamily units, um, with no limit on number of bedrooms. So if you do, if you play around with maps and you kind of see how, what that acreage is, that's that's going to be a big deal. Um, and I know that there is a form that needs to be filled out by the town by the um, end of or May 22nd or something like that um, to get us in compliance for this year. And then I was under the impression from reading some articles that we did need to have a plan in place by the end of the year, but. Sue would know more about that than I. Um, so yeah, lots of things to consider of, um, you know, and then this is all contingent on if we want grant money. So there's three grant outlets that that hinges on this. So it becomes a decision for the, the town and the residents if, if they want to do the overlay district or get grant money. So, now, one thing I want to make clear is that there's no requirement that any housing be built as a result of this. All we're doing is changing some zoning to possibly allow it. But even Correct. if we allow it, doesn't mean it's going to happen. In fact, it, it can't happen. It, it will never happen. Well, uh, so there's no requirement that we actually create 750 units. It's just that the zoning district has to be in place uh, for 50 acres and 15 units an acre, and that's where you get the 750. It's just a made up number, essentially. Gary. Um, I'd like to suggest that um, we start talking about this though. Um, and there's, it's just, there's a thousand questions that one could ask. And um, uh, is there a way of having part of that zone less than 15 units per acre and intensify the use elsewhere, that kind of a thing. How can we manipulate this in ways that would make a lot of sense for the town? Um, I think it just a, as a point of curiosity, about 15 to 20 percent of the half mile radius is the ocean um, from a map I saw recently. So that intensifies the use um, in what's left over, um, sort of like what Mary was just mentioning. But um, as far as the town meeting, um, I'd really like to have a realistic idea if we're going to have town meeting in April or is it going to be May and then start working backwards from it and we should start envisioning realistically what we need to do to, we're compelled to have a public hearing on bylaw changes. Um, in my mind, if we're lucky, we could have a public hearing that would take two long meetings. And then we vote as a planning board on, after the public hearing, on what, what changes we wanna make or what we wanna specifically bring to town meeting. For, to my mind, that's at least four to five weeks of hard work uh, by the board. And I think it has to be, intensified because as uh, Sarah's mentioned, the moment we start the public hearing, it puts in jeopardy any applications before the ZBA. So we should think about timeline. Um, and then I'd like to comment uh, be between now and the next meeting on all the stuff that Sarah and Chris put together. But I, I wanna end, asking, end by asking Sarah, which, which document do we look at, which was the most recent that has all the different changes that you were pulling from to break them down into chunks. What's the name yeah. of the document? So I don't know if you're looking at your screen, but I've, you queued this up perfectly, Gary. So um, the timeline, um, as of right now, the best information that we have so far is that we're still targeting an April 4th town meeting. Um, yeah, um, I just wanted to let you know, I did reach out to Alan yeah. Wilson about the urgency of pinning down a date. Um, and he said that the decision is the selectmen's, but uh, he said, given the surge, you'll be surprised if they can hold a meeting indoors in April. Right. But, um, he thought the selectmen would make a decision on the date early in February. 
So given that, we have to assume that it's April 4th and any work that we do will just mean that we're, we got our work, our homework in early. Um, so if you work, if you take um, the timeline where the bottom is April 4th, um, there's the printing of the warrant and then when March we'd have the hearings because we don't want to tie up the ZBA since there's so many things where we, you know, that list I gave you before may be a pipe dream in terms of being able to get them all done, but you know, it's like, let's just bite it off and do it is my personal feeling. Um, in February, we need to have final drafts for proofreading and post the public hearings and have, um, and that seems, that takes a lot of time. And then, so Chris and I um, put together, we talked about this at some length. Um, our regular meetings are listed up here, um, uh, up here. Um, and it seems like our meetings are full. So our proposal is to um, have three, maybe four, maybe two, hopefully, <laughs> um, additional meetings that are just dedicated to zoning changes. And we propose that they be, the, uh, this is a Tuesday, January 18th, but then January 31st is a, is a Monday and February 7th is a Monday. Um, and that um, the rationale is that all of these topics have actually had considerable review already, but also need to be carefully vetted. We know that in the fall, we found some ways to improve things by looking at them carefully. And recognizing that everybody, but these would be pl uh, planning board meetings with votes on uh, as needed. If we can't decide uh, by consensus on various aspects, we would take some votes and move on. Um, and that it, some people couldn't attend, but we will, um, the documents will be ready with time for you to um, send in comments and make sure that, that we will discuss comments that are submitted by email or in writing um, so that people feel that they have the opportunity to, you know, to weigh in. And um, the proposals that we've, we've proposed 80, 11, 10 or 11 unique topics, but when we put them forward to town meeting, we may want to combine them into a handful of articles to make it keep everybody sane. Um, but because they are unique uh, topics, we thought it would be easier to talk about them by topic. Um, and so that's the proposal for how we think it makes sense to get them done. Um, otherwise, we're kind of stringing this out over the fall town meeting and maybe the next year's town meeting. And there's still some stuff we, ha we haven't identified in this list. Um, and then to Gary's next point, um, I don't know if you guys want to, let me, why don't I finish and then we can come back. Uh, the files. Um, are in the zoning recodification folder, spring 22 town meeting folder. And the things in that folder are um, a roadmap, which is called spring 22 town meeting steps and status. And that's a document we've been just updating to say kind of a summary, what's next, what needs to be done on each of these, uh, these um, topics. Um, there are, I think nine, uh, draft articles there right now. I call them articles. Like I said, we may combine them into articles, but draft topics. And we use the same uh, numbering convention that we used for the fall, which is just PB, meaning planning board number one, two, three, four, five, et cetera. Um, and so we, uh, they, so it says PB for accessory dwelling units so that you can kind of see what they are. And each of them except for the sections one through four, because I couldn't figure out how to do it, um, have two things on it. Um, one is on the left is the proposed article. And then I cut from the current zoning, the current new numbered zoning. So now we're working with our new numbered zoning bylaw. So I um, added in a um, uh, section that says um, what the existing is. So we don't have to, it'll, it should make it a lot easier for you to see what the current, what the changes are. Um, I didn't have time to, you know, align them up and they don't exactly align um, section by section, but I hopefully that will help um, you to see us all to see what we're doing. 
So there's the articles, and then there's also the current zoning, which is the renumbered zoning. There's a new table of contents that helps you. I found that very helpful to just print out. Um, there's the zoning changes that were proposed by Mark Bobrowski, which was, some of you know it as draft eight from December, 2020. It's called zoning changes. And then there's a memo that describes the rationale that was done when Mark Bobrowski started the work. So all of that is in that folder and you can use comments for edits, typos, et cetera, as we did before. Um, I think big proposed changes, you should probably, we'll probably have to create a process for doing that, but let's start with comments. Um, and then to go back, I think, um, you know, we want to, if you have, if you have comment, you know, substantive comments, I'd like to, you know, amend that, you know, section 7.3 as proposed to something. The more specific we can get um, about, uh, amendments and modifications, the faster this will go. So it's gonna take a, some work on all of us, our parts. We also um, talked about, um, this is Chris and I talked about um, asking you tonight to ask Mark Bobrows Bobrowski for a proposal to review the strategy, review the draft, uh, draft articles again, even though he, most of them are from his original work but sometimes some time, you know, changes it. Attend the three zoning meetings that we've proposed and attend the public hearings and the town meeting. And then to authorize, I guess, Sue to engage him up to $10,000 and to manage it so that we don't spend more than that $10,000 that's left in the zoning recodification budget. Um, if he says it's gonna be a lot more than 10,000, then we'll have to, go to plan B. I don't know what that is, but um, so this requires that we all read the material and uh, make administrative changes with comments and make specific comments so we can vote them or adopt them by con consensus um, and attends to the extent that you're available um, the three dedicated zoning meetings. Um, and that's, yeah. You have so, a date. You have a date you want comments by? Sarah? Well, um, cool. Yeah, so I think we've got drafts there um, now for the first, our proposal was next Tuesday, that's the 18th, um, that we review and suggest changes to numbers one through five. Okay. So just focus on the first five that are, that are there. Um, I just, I can, um, if we wanted to modify that, but we don't try to take on the whole thing um, in a single meeting. Um, and so getting chain, getting, um, I think, um, uh, suggestions prior to the meeting, maybe, you know, um, the day before would be great. So then we can consolidate them. There obviously, um, I know Mary's been really good about, uh, the, some of the, you know, just, you're really good at the reading things for clarity and typos. And, um, one of the challenges is to make sure we foot them you know, that when it references another section in the bylaw, that has to be the right section. And that work has yet to be done in some places. Um, I did my best to try to renumber everything according to the new table of contents. And for anybody who's listening on the call who hasn't been down this path with us, we did a lot of changes to our bylaw, re, uh, renumbering large sections um, at the November town meeting. And so those are coming soon to a zoning bylaw near you. Um, I think uh, Gary has his hand up first and then Sue. I'll, I'll yield to Sue first. Thanks Gary, mine is just a, mine is just a meeting date um, question or a time question. Are you looking for these at a, at a regular meeting time, Sarah? At whatever the board thinks. If I was thinking okay. you know, 6.30 or seven, whatever works for people, yeah. Not a middle of the day. I only I only note that January eighteenth, um, Chris and I both have a conflict because there's a affordable housing trust meeting that night. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Good. That's why we're putting this out here now. So what about maybe the nineteenth? Thank you, Sue. <laughs> and the seventeenth is Martin Luther King 
uh, day, which is why I didn't put it on that. Just it wouldn't bother me. But okay, um, could I weigh in? Gary, go ahead, um, Gary. Unless I'm missing something, um, we we have to by law have a public hearing about all the bylaw changes. There's no way on this earth that we could do it in one meeting. I, I, I will be lucky to do that in two. Does, does anybody agree on that? Yes, I think you're right. We're gonna need two other dates for public hearings. And then um, there's not just one bylaw change here where maybe we could vote at the end of the public hearing as a board. There's a lot here. Um, we will need one or two meetings for ourselves to vote after the public hearing. So the way I see it, it for, at best, we'd have four, four long meetings be, before the due date to print out a, uh, uh, well, I forgot the term for it, but for the town meeting, the document. Um, I think we may have to tell the selectmen this is not feasible to be ready for April. Um, I mean, we can give them feedback. Uh, you know, if this was in May, it'd be more feasible, but let's, let's include, you've got to include, please, in your list of your schedule here, um, you know, we are statutorily required to have public hearings, and then we would be having to vote thereafter. And that's a lot of, we're going to do meetings every single week for a month or for five weeks. After, well, it, after the three hearings to discuss it that you're proposing, which I actually, I'm really tired of discussing these because I was here a couple of years ago. We, we had a long, multiple meeting to discuss these ahead of time. I would like to condense the general discussions of these and go, go to the public hearing as quickly as possible, and I'll stop there. Uh, we, we could bite off smaller pieces for April, um, and then hopefully they might be something in the fall. Yeah, I see a couple things we could push off perhaps, but... Um... Go ahead, Mary. I'll agree that it's, it's going to be an aggressive schedule. Um, I did want to ask some questions, make some comments. Um, I, I didn't read all of the articles, obviously, in, in great detail yet, but I did notice that the accessory dwelling unit one had changed a fair amount since the, the um, hearing that we had had last February. So I think, um, and there may be others. So I, I think there, there does have to be um, you know, some good public hearings on these, some great attention to details and highlighting what has changed even since the last draft. Um, also referencing draft eight that um, Mr. Bobrowski did, there are still errors in that. Um, there's many sections that are brand new that aren't highlighted to show that they're new. There were sections taken out that weren't noted that they were taken out. So that needs some work to get even to, to you know, kind of ground zero. Um, I had a question about where, and maybe I just missed it. Um, Can I just comment on the Bobrowski draft? Um, I just, uh, I'm not, I, I'm just dealing with working with what I was handed, but I'm not sure it needs, that's just a tool, the, which is why all along I've been saying we need to have articles that can pass the town meeting. And then my, it's my opinion that um, on the 18th, you know, in January, we should do the work that you're saying, Mary, to hammer them through, because I agree, we, we do know that there are some errors in that draft eight, which is where I've copied things from. So even though, Gary, they've been reviewed, now it's time to get them tight. Um, or, and I think it's less important to worry about whether this little section change or that section at this point, but is the new proposed language what we want? And um, is it, um, and then have him there to also to answer questions. So we don't yeah. guess at the legality of issues. Yeah, that's all great. I just don't want things posted for residents to look at and, and, and say, okay, things are highlighted in yellow because they've changed, yet things have changed and they're not highlighted in yellow type of thing, right? Like that's, that's just misrepresenting what's happening. And so we have to be clear on that. But this is not a public, we're not sending this, the, that draft aid out to the public to try to figure it out. I think we're gonna have to have 
uh, one piece that's missing in here is, you know, some letters, um, articles from the cricket and explaining it. And we may have, we now may not be able to bite this all off, but. I think the draft date is already posted out on the website as, as here's a oh, reference. Um, so I'm kind of alluding to that as well as how we're moving forward with it. Um, I didn't see mention the floodplain bylaw or earth removal. Are we putting those off? You can add them if you want. Well, <laughs> we didn't tackle everything. <laughs> because the earth removal was a complete new rewrite. So that, 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 and I don't think we ever had a public hearing on that. And um, floodplain was never updated for the 2020 um, mandates for the floodplain bylaw. So those have to be addressed. Um, and then my last comment on some of this is that I'm, I'm I'm a little concerned that we would start to be violating open meeting law if we do too many commenting behind the scenes and not address it all at a meeting. Um, you know, if we're just doing, you know, typos and edits, that's one thing, but if we're commenting and then not posting prior to a meeting, that's, that's not allowed. Um, and then I'll, I'll address the Grabowski contract when we talk about that. Thank you. Uh, Becky Jacks, you had a hand up. Hi, Ron. No, um, Hi. thank you, um, yeah. Becky Jakes. Um, I just wanted to make sure that if you all did want to schedule a meeting for the 19th, that because of the holiday and the amount of days needed um, for proper posting, it would have to be submitted by Thursday. Just, just an FYI. Uh, what what's the uh, board? What do you think the board's um, the um, mandate of the April town meeting? Do you have any feeling one way on how you guys are, are feeling, or are you, you going to make a decision by February? Or to be honest, I don't know. Okay. I wish I had something definitive to tell you. I was not able to attend our last meeting, so I'm not. Okay. And I haven't had an update on that. Okay, to, to Gary's point, the, the more it could be pushed out, the better, I think, for our prejudice, for what we want to be done. Okay, noted, thank you. Okay, all right. Any other comments from the board? Um, Sarah, Chris, Christine? I guess um, we would, Mary uh, had a comment about the um, our proposal for getting my, Mark back engaged here um and uh so that was our proposal was to to um bring him yeah, back so my just my questions were you know what what is his hourly rate what um have we spent thus far with an hourly rate and um you know I think I'm assuming that for the maps, the 2000 is coming out of that 10,000. So does that come, go down to 8,000? So. Um, I would yeah. look to that. Yeah, I would look to that budget first, but um, if needed, um, I can also tap some other professional service funds. So. So I think we haven't oh. spent any hourly money from him. Is that correct, Sue? We That's haven't. Correct. That's correct. And I don't know what his rate is, um, but we'll find out when we ask him for a proposal for this work. So we will get a proposal that we would all sign. <laughs> we did that in the past. I saw a document that the board set up with him. Um, I saw, um, yes, I think unless administratively sue greg would take that over i don't know no in the past it was signed by the by the planning board, board. Yep. so we would sign it doesn't Mary have to, to be but answer. it can be i mean okay, my, so that, my thought oh, was that we just authorize it if possible authorize the work to get going because it's part of you know we wait another two weeks before we sort of approve his um work then we miss out you know we're, we're already behind 
So that's my thought. I don't even know if he's available to do any work for that matter, but <laughs> um, hopefully he would be willing to help us out. So, uh, Ron, Gary, um, if you're trying to get consensus on what to ask him from, I think we need to um, be precise about this. I, I'll, I'll, I would suggest these um, the three zoning meetings you're suggesting. I think we have um, try to reduce that to two because we're going to need two public hearings, long meetings. We're going to have to have two planning board meetings after that, most likely, if my guess is even remotely correct. So now you're talking about six meetings plus town meeting. You know, let's try to get a little bit definitive about this. I don't think, um, well, we have to do this with intent. <laughs> We can put some of this on our regular schedule meetings. I, I think uh, some of the lower hanging items, uh, Sarah, there maybe. A couple I think we could actually talk about tonight if people have bandwidth, but we may not have bandwidth after. <laughs> you know, there's one or two. So Laura has her hand up. Go ahead, Laura. Yeah, thanks, Sarah and Ron. Um, just looking through, Sarah, what you started to drop in there, what you have dropped in there, I started to look through it. And um, I see your table about uh, stormwater. Happy to work on that one. Um, it does seem like a bigger question. You know, do we move it out? Do we move, keep it in? Are there other, there, there's a lot in section six that overlaps into the sort of stormwater, you know, performance criteria question. So I don't know whether that's, something that we feel like we've got time to take on now. I'm I certainly have an interest in, in strengthening that regulation beyond sort of visual screening into more performance-based green infrastructure and so forth, which has a lot to do with stormwater. I guess I am wondering out loud, can we, can we chew that off right now? <laughs> Is it too much or do we start on it, but maybe decide that it's not ready for town meeting? I don't know, these are just sort of questions I'm asking myself and the board. Um, so here's the list that we that we sort of posed. Um, there's uh, and Mary just mentioned floodplains. Um, I'm gonna just highlight the ones that I think are actually quite easy. That one's written. This one is Burbowski, Mr. Borowski had suggested something um, as well as um, these. I think are quite simple and the non-conforming use I think is essentially um, we may not all agree but I think the, that there are specific areas of disagreement that we can make of take a vote and to move on there's not they're not complex so whether or not we would all agree on all of the aspects of them, Maybe not. So let's take curb cuts. The question is whether or not the authority should remain with the planning board or go to DPW or somebody else. That's really the only, it seems to me, that's the only um, contentious I think we voted issue. to move it. I think we mo voted to move that to the DPW. Maybe it's already been voted, um, yes. but we haven't voted it. So, so my point is that while this is a long list, some of the, these actually are quite um, uh, fairly easy for us to just move along. And maybe what we should do is take those first <laughs> without, um, you know, on the neck on that January, if we do it on Wednesday, January 19th, if that works for people, we could take those that are in kind of scope uh, and then maybe talk about the scope of the others to sort of just familiarize ourselves with it but try to get those essentially ready for town, for plant, for a public hearing. And uh, I agree with Gary that we wanna make sure we incorporate public input, but I think at that point it's, I hope will be simpler um, to uh, address. So some of these are, you know, it's a long list, but I don't think some of them are that complicated. Some of them are very complicated, so. Um, so why don't we start with the question of would people be at least willing to take um, start with a meeting on January 19th, pencil in your calendars, the 31st and February 7th 
on January 19th, we could have the agenda be those items I just highlighted and a discussion of the scope of the others. Just conceptually, are we able to do it? And um, and then move on from there. If we, my um, and so I guess that's my first question. Fine with me. Because to, absent doing that, or or somebody want to make about a more specific propose another specific proposal uh, would be great. Sounds good to me. Okay, so I'll put together an agenda for Sharon and Sue and Ron. Um, that Moving are the 18th to the 19th, right, Sarah? Yes. Yes. Okay. That that would work better. Yeah. Um, at 6:30, I assume is that work for people? Okay. Yeah. And then we'll um and we'll have the scope be uh, these that are highlighted. I might pick one of I I think we'd pick probably this one here too, because we worked on that significantly in the spring, in the fall, and then the scope of those others if we have time. But um, okay. And then um, are you okay with uh, sorry, um, Sue and me asking uh, Mark Browski for a proposal? and authorizing him to at least attend that meeting on January 19th. And then on the 24th, we could take up his proposal. And Sarah, I think even if he can't come to that meeting on the 19th, we should probably have the meeting anyway. I don't think Absolutely. We, we don't need his guidance on most of those things. Simple yeah. things. Yeah. Sounds good to me. I think I, you want to vote on authorizing that or just go ahead and do it and see what the proposal is we're not spending any we might any, be spending money to have him come for that one meeting and review some stuff but i so I well, I'll, I'll make a motion to authorize um sue and sarah to uh, propose mark Bobrowski um and get a proposal from him on the future i'll second that any discussion? Well, like I said before, Ron, um, it's not very clear to me what we're asking him to put a price on. How many meetings? We're just getting an hourly rate from him. Getting an hourly rate not to exceed ten thousand dollars, <laughs> or eight thousand, or whatever the number we pick is. I think that seems workable. At the very least, Gary, we're asking him for three zoning meetings, two public hearings, and a town meeting. Uh, and we can add, um, hopefully, by the time we get through a zoning meeting and the public hearing, it's my hope that we will be modifying based on public comment, but not necessarily having any kind of rewrite. There will be planning board meetings after the public hearing is closed. Correct. Yeah. But sure. Okay. Mary, have your hand up. Oh, that was, it, it had to do with stormwater. So I, I can, we're right in the middle of this, so I can loop back around with that. Okay. All right, so roll call on um, Bobrowski. Uh, yes, sorry. <laughs> Sarah. Christine, uh, Ms. Yes. Felicio, Ms. Foley? Yes. Mr. Gilbert? Yes. Mr. Olney? Yes. Ms. Tenney? Yes. And the chair votes yes. Okay, you guys are authorized to proceed. Well, can I ask one more question about, um, yeah. I guess, budget? Um, because even once this process gets through and we you know, get through town meeting and all that, I would assume it's a, a decent amount of money to compile and print or, or you know, put into format and maps and, you know, put the actual zoning bylaw document together. Um, do we have a number what that costs and is that currently in our budget? No. I don't have a current number because I would, um, after a Springtown meeting, I would really like to hire someone to format it 
um, well. It's in pretty <laughs> um, jumbled shape right now. Um, I am guessing, you know, it, it could take a bit, even, even the back end of it, which doesn't need to be voted on, but the references and all of that should really be cleaned up. And I, and I would I'd be happy to put out a proposal and get a price for it, but that's something um, that I can have in my, under my budget, I believe. I think I can't imagine that's a reason for us not to do it. No, it's not a reason to do it. <laughs> no, I was just trying to get the whole picture of the, you know, that make sure we have all this in place. Yeah. I'm gonna just, um, with your permission, Ron, just share one more thing. Um, this is uh, an example, if you haven't um, yet been to the site, the way we decided to format these. So they have an article number with a name of the general intent and then some notes about things, <laughs> they vary. Um, and then the sort of the beginning of an article and then the proposed language and then the existing language. Um, the formatting, I just literally cut and pasted stuff so don't worry too much about the formatting. And um, so there's uh, one of those for, so you can see um, there's, they're labeled planning board sections one through four, adult entertainment and so forth. Here's the, um, down here, can you see my cursor? This is the zoning changes with town meeting changes and there's Bobrowski's memo, as well as the um, zoning changes from Mark Bobrowski dated December 8th, 2020 with the highlights that may be incomplete as Mary has indicated, but at least it's, it's what we had to work with. So hopefully that's helpful and I'll stop talking. Okay, Ron, thanks. Ron, could I ask my final uh, stormwater question? Yes. Um, listening to the December 13th meeting, I think Sarah noted that she had gotten some new stormwater regulations from Chuck Dam. Are those out on SharePoint? I'll send them, I'll put them in the um, in this folder. Okay, Use great. the same format. I'll put them as a, I'll number them for stormwater and at least we at least start with that. Um, it's a little bit not straightforward, I think, but yeah, somebody can okay. look at how to do that. Great. I and haven't then, spent any time on then, it. Oh, okay. Um, and then I saw you added floodplain, but I think we still have to add earth removal to the list. Okay. All right, um, thanks. Listen, I'd like to um, bump the um, Peter Goudreau uh, item up now because I see a lot of people waiting. We can uh, just, we can do the planners report and the subcommittee in minutes after. So uh, I'd like to move them up now. Um, on Friday, January 7th, I received a phone call from Peter Goudreau requesting a few minutes of our time to discuss an important opportunity for the town and the planning board to consider. So I granted Peter and attorney Mark Lovsky this, this slot of time to present to you their proposal and uh, who needs control of the screen or do you want me to put up the slides? Or um, do you not want to put up the slide? I, I don't think we need slides at this point. Uh, okay, go ahead, Mark. Um, good evening, uh, I'm Mark Lovsky. Uh, Peter and I have been working with cell signaling technology for a couple of years in an effort to uh, help the company find a proper location for expansion on the North Shore. And uh, it's been a thorough search uh, and exhaustive search. Uh, cell signaling uh, is a life science company which was founded by Manchester resident Michael Combe that has facilities in Beverly, Danvers, and <clears throat> employees around the world, about 500 employees. Uh, a couple of years ago, we started the process. And uh, at the moment, uh, cell signaling is, is focused on expanding its facility on Trask uh, Road in Beverly. Uh, but 
Uh, Michael Combe has always had a fondness for Manchester as a resident and uh, the former uh, gravel quarry behind the Manchester Athletic Club uh, is a site that is particularly appealing to him because of it being an opportunity to actually reclaim a, a piece of property that has been stripped and denuded. Uh, it is uh, properly located. It is uh, 40 plus acres. It is in the limited commercial district, as you all know, uh, but we think that it would be an appropriate uh, piece of property for cell signaling's expansion and ultimately a campus for cell signaling. Uh, consequently, after months of negotiation, cell signaling entered into an agreement to acquire the 40 acres. And the agreement, unfortunately, is contingent on our obtaining or obtaining necessary uh, zoning changes, not to uh, permit the project, but to provide an opportunity for an application. Uh, some of you may recall that years ago, I was involved with New England Biolabs uh, on a similar venture uh, on Upper Pine Street. Uh, the town was very receptive. Uh, a zoning change was enacted, which was going to give New England Biolabs the opportunity to apply for a special permit. Uh, but ultimately, uh, for, for multiple reasons, that project didn't move forward. Essentially, what we're asking for now is for the town to consider similar zoning uh, for that section of the limited commercial district that includes this 40 acre parcel. Uh, in addition to that, as described in an overview that hopefully you all received today, uh, we're hoping that we could encourage the town to adopt some additional dimensional changes that would enable an appropriate building for cell signaling's expansion. Uh, after hearing Sarah Creighton's presentation, uh, I'm feeling extremely guilty uh, that we're uh, dropping this on you at the last minute, but uh, we couldn't control the timing. And uh, we are willing to do whatever may be necessary to assist you in the process. We think that uh, it would ultimately be a wonderful opportunity, both for cell signaling in the town of Manchester. Uh, we've outlined the scope of the project in the overview, so I'm not going to rehash that. But at this point, under the circumstances, I think if possible, it would be helpful if you could designate a representative or subcommittee, if you would consider this, uh, to meet with us to draft a proposed article for changes to the zoning uh, in the uh, L LCD district. Um, with me tonight are obviously Peter Gordeaux and other representatives from cell signaling, including, I think I saw Chris Combe. Uh, we'd be happy to answer any questions, but we didn't anticipate that this introduction was going to be necessarily project specific, getting into detail. We just wanted to uh, encourage you to consider working with us to, creating, to create the opportunity uh, for the door to be open so that we can move forward. Uh, if the zoning change does not happen at the Springtown meeting, unfortunately, uh, we would perhaps lose the opportunity. Our agreement is contingent on the zoning change happening uh, in the spring. Uh, we uh, tried to negotiate for additional time, but that wasn't available. So uh, again, I'm sorry to add to your stress level, uh, but uh, we certainly would appreciate an opportunity to work with you to try to get this done uh, on that tight schedule. Okay, thank you, Mark. Are there any general questions from the board at this time, Gary? Just 
Um, hi, Mark, and um, welcome back, Peter. <laughs> hey, um, we, uh, the biggest question in my mind is, I mean, the town needs tax revenue. We know that. And we've considered quite a mixture of uses potentially in the LCD. Do you have, um, I assume this is a phased project, and do you have any handle on the kind of tax revenue that this would generate, or what would phase one potentially generate? Uh, we would anticipate that uh, phase one, uh, which would probably uh, be approximately 125,000 square feet of space uh, with a obviously improved site, would probably generate close to half a million dollars a year in real estate taxes. Okay. But that's, it, it's, hard to, it's hard to pin that number down because we don't know exactly uh, how much space is going to be developed and uh, what the costs are going to be. Okay, I'll just mention a number of points. We don't have to go into them tonight, but just, just say, um, in general, this sounds like a potentially great thing for the town. There's no impact on the schools, which a lot of people um, like, maybe not everybody, but there's no housing component, which some people like. Um, but um, what would you be anticipating wanting to um, have water usage from the town and what sort of uh, volumes would that be? We know we have surplus capacity, but it would be nice to know how much you would project and if you would uh, want to tie in as also sewage. And, um, and then beyond that, um, I would like to bend over backwards to not put this on the desk of Sue Brown to have to work out all the details. I would like to think that you guys might um, actually work and develop an actual uh, text that could be uh, brought for a vote. So there, with that regard, I'd be anxious. I'd love to work on any sort of subcommittee, but I'll work out what specific setbacks are you suggesting, what specific lot widths, lot coverage, um, any additional definitions that might be needed for that zoning district. Um, and uh, I have another note here I can't read, but uh, that's the kind of stuff um, I'd like to see done uh, that's not on the shoulders particularly of the town to do. Um, well, I can, I can respond to, your, to those questions. Um, in June of 2020, uh, we submitted a letter to Sue Brown uh, outlining what we thought might be appropriate changes in the limited commercial district to encourage appropriate development, uh, not knowing that we were going to have an opportunity uh, with respect to this 40 acres, but knowing that Manchester was a, a location that the Combe family was interested in. Uh, we just signed the agreement the end of last week. Uh, we're now just beginning the due diligence period. Uh, to answer your questions with respect to water and sewer, uh, that's part of the due diligence that's taking place right now. Uh, in addition, obviously, we have to do a 21E a site evaluation, uh, some additional engineering. Uh, however, back to the water question, uh, we have uh, asked cell signaling about water consumption and it's not a high water user. Uh, I think that we can likely uh, uh, do the project without uh, an unnecessary burden on the town's supply. And, and Christina? Oh, sorry. Are you, are you done, Gary? Uh, could you comment on sewage and then I'm done? Um, Peter, you want to try that one? <laughs> uh, Gary, I don't have the I don't have the sewage flows at my fingertips. We do have them from CSTA. I just don't remember them off the top of my head. We've had some prior conversations with Greg um, about capacity, and at the time, my recollection is that you know their their consumption or their flow fell with well within the potential capacity should the town manage to get out from under the consent decree or whatever the you know whatever the um, constraint is presently so we can have all those we can have we will have all those um, facts and figures available again i think we're trying to stay away from a project specific we're trying to we we, we would prefer that the zoning um review not become project specific but rather you know a, a, a general zoning um matter before we get into the specifics of the project you'll understand people need a certain comfort level as to what they're getting into 
Um, I'm just saying it's not a huge water usage. There's other biotech that are a huge water usage. So it's important to know that. Thanks very CST, much. CST has two existing facilities in Beverly and Danvers and uh, together they approximate the size of you know, the facility that uh, we would propose for this site and we can, we can gather that, that information and present it to you very easily. Thanks, uh, Christina. Hi, thanks, Ron. Um, hi, Peter. So I, my question is, you're anticipating this entire zoning change for the entire LCD. I think that's a big ask. I mean, would an overlay district be sufficient to make this deal go through? Um, uh, first of all, uh, as I understand it, there are very few properties within the L. CD district uh, that would be uh, appropriate for development. Uh, the overlay already uh, exists on Upper Pine Street. Uh, the dimensional changes that we would propose, we hope you would consider to be appropriate for other properties as well. Uh, the arguments were outlined in that letter that we submitted in June of 2020 and we'd be happy to uh, revisit that discussion. So the answer is no. I, I don't, I think if it were just for this site, we would have a, uh, we have a problem with spot zoning perhaps. Uh, and in addition, I, I think that it would be appropriate while you're doing this to consider the applicability of similar dimensional changes for the few other developable properties in the LCD district. Completely agree, but as we are constrained with water and sewer, you know, by right, those size buildings could tap future uses um, that we may need to use and reserve for other things. So those are large buildings compared to, I think the proposal is fantastic. I think it's a great idea. I'm a little concerned just at first blush seeing this an hour ago or two hours ago, um, about changing this with this this time frame, but I the pro the project is exciting and I support it. I'm a little concerned about the entire LCD changing. Well, I, I think that it's important to understand that what we're really asking for is the opportunity to apply for approval for a project. Right Absolutely. now, there's there's no special permit avenue. Correct. And, okay. No. And yeah. Also, going to propose that some of the dimensional changes also be subject to the planning board's discretion based on an examination of the project and the site. So uh, approval of these zoning changes won't open a door wide for uh, wholesale development. Thank you, Sarah. Christine, I would suggest you um, and everybody just take a second at some point and look at the GIS map and click on the conservation or the open space layer. There is, not to repeat what Mark said, but there is very, very little of the LCD which isn't constrained from development. Thank you, uh, Sarah. You're on mute. Uh, my comments are thank you for coming. I think that this um, is an interesting um, proposal that is consistent with what we've been hearing people say they want and that we may want to, we've been thinking about the LCD and not and pushing it down the road a little bit. So it may be that we're, we do things um, in two phases. And I think our, our lane is the zoning changes. And then any owner in the LCD could come forward with proposals, this one, or if this one falls through, some other one that um, might be proposed in the LCD. And that's where we have to focus. What is the What are the zoning changes? And it does seem to me that setbacks and height and perhaps uh, dense, the lot coverage are already things we were had identified as things that we wanted to do and that the they should apply to the whole district or the, the um, to avoid the spot zoning problem. And 
the allowed uses if we were to um, uh, allow certain uses, if some of them are debatable, we can modify, you know, if this is, can be an, a little bit of an iterative process once we address the requests that are before us of setbacks, height, and special permit. Um, so I, I think this is a great opportunity. I think we should just focus our attention on uh, the allowed uses and the special permit um, process and any regulations. And um, full disclosure, when I was looking at the Mark Bobrowski changes today uh, for section six for review, special permit review, I thought, oh, those that, that new language is much stronger than our old language. <laughs> and that's why I added it to the list. So I think that the, if you go look at that, I think it's uh, the number 11 of our changes. And then you say, oh, well, if we were to uh, propose those for the LCD, um, at least in part, they strengthen what we have there. And um, it's a starting point. So I, I think this is doable and I think we should move forward within keeping it as one of the top things on that timeline. Thanks, Sarah. I'm Mary. Thanks. Um, the, kind of uh, along the same lines as Sarah and Christine, um, when I was reading this, I did have questions about the, the bylaw changes and for the entirety of the LCD um, in that area. So to Sarah's point, it seems like the allowed uses would need to narrow down to commercial uses for if we're going to grant that that height variance and um, setbacks and things like that. So all things to be discussed, but I, I think this would sounds like a great opportunity for Manchester. Okay, great. Thank you, Mary. Any other comments from the board? I do, Ron. Thank you, Chris, sorry. Uh, so uh, my question is uh, has to do with the 40 acres. I don't think you need 40 acres to build this building. So there's going to be quite a bit of land left over. And I'm wondering whether uh, you would envision some additional uses on the leftover pieces of the property or on neighboring properties. Uh, uh, as, as I mentioned, the uh, Cone family is uh, interested in preserving land and uh, not looking to develop any more of the 40 acres than needs to be developed to do the project. Uh, we recognize that the, the 40 acres is uh, abutting conservation land. So one of the things that uh, would be uh, provided for would be access to the conservation land and maybe even parking for access to the conservation land. Uh, uh, the, uh, a building of 125,000 feet uh, is gonna require a significant amount of parking. Uh, we don't know at this point whether it be structured parking or, or otherwise, but the, the hope is that, that with the, the additional building height, not only can we get the floors uh, that we need to have proper lab height, but that we can avoid having a larger footprint than we need for the project, um, and all in an effort to maintain open space. But the, the site plan review process, the special permit process, will provide the planning board in the town with an opportunity to tell cell signaling or any other uh, entity that wants to develop property in LCD district, uh, what its requirements are and what the conditions for development would be. And I think that cell signaling uh, is uh, likely to abide by any reasonable conditions that would address those points that you just raised. Actually, I was going the other direction. There may be some valuable pieces of land left over that aren't worthy of conservation that could be put to another tax generating use that would benefit the town. That, that's possible. Uh, but uh, CST is looking at the site 
as a uh, location for a campus. A and obviously it's not going to start off with multiple buildings, but, but one of the provisions that we want to see in the zoning probably would be if we could have multiple buildings on the site. Uh, and uh, in, the, in the first instance, obviously we'll uh, do the, the 125,000 square foot building, but there needs to be uh, land reserved for expansion. Um. Laura. Thank you. I'm um, interested in the proposal. I think there's a lot of uh, good here for Manchester and the timing of this is actually good, I think, because such um, proposals as increasing the height from 35 to 55 is a nice opportunity to, for us to do sort of a test fit to understand. So these dimensions aren't so abstract. I really think that the um, 55 height, you know, in addition to allowing the program that we're talking about here for life sciences does uh, enable more program in a smaller footprint. So less impervious surface, potentially multiple buildings, you know, a, a campus that can grow over time. I think there's a lot of good that deserves our investigation here. So thank you for bringing it to us. Thank you. Um, I also uh, applaud the project. I think it's great. I think it's kind of the direction the town would like to see. Just a couple of questions, not getting into the weeds, but this type of facility, is it a brick and block building or a pre-engineered building? Uh, what typically do these lab buildings look like? The, arch the, architecture, the architecture varies greatly, but I think that if you were to go to New England Biolabs in Ipswich, you might see you know, a, a facility that has, houses many of the same uses or, sim or similar uses. Um, I think that aesthetics um, matter to the Combe family, and I, and I don't think you'll see a brick and you, know, you won't see a block building, you won't see a metal building, you're going to see something that's got architectural integrity and interest in, in a landscaping plan that um, enhances that uh, tremendously. Thank you. And just another question on the 40 acres. And then I saw on the map there were 20 acres. Is the MAC included in, is the MAC staying? Or are you buying that also? Or is, uh, is it, are you in, in concert, the map. I, I, think, still I think on on that plan, what you saw is a thirty acre piece, and that that thirty acre piece is the piece that John Donovan uh, donated to the trustees of reservations. So uh, it was a total of almost eighty, and and almost half of that was given to the trustees. Okay. I will note. Excuse me, Ron. Um, yes. That you requested that uh, the sewer that the sewer constraint limitation that's in six section six point eleven, we deleted that at the last town meeting, so we can check that one off. The, oh, off the, that made our life a little easier. So, it was a leak. It doesn't it doesn't guarantee guarantee you access to the sewer. It just that that section's gone. That's a big help. Okay, so uh, without any other uh, comments from the board, um, a path forward. Um, I like the idea of uh, meeting with a couple of board members uh, to kind of track this. Um, what's the feeling of the board on something like that? I'm in favor of that. Um, what's, the, what's the time frame suggested? Does Sue Brown have comments on how to proceed? I'll ask her. Sue, any comments? I think it's I think it's common practice for um, a large developer to work in concert with the town. I think it's even for the developer to offer recommendations, a proposed bylaw, um, if they have the capacity that 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 we could review, um, or we can work or we can work side by side. So um, I think either either ways either way that could work. Whoever whoever is ready to offer a proposed um, bylaw change. I don't think it matters where it emanates from as long as we can agree to it. Um, so what is the status of the MAPC work 
on this um, topic? That's a great question, Sarah. I was going to be following up with him on Thursday. So right now, they, he's still moving forward with um, the regulations, um, draft regulations, as we had discussed, um, which would, which I had um, informed him to include regulations for um, this type of development as a use and um, and the regulations for it. So if we know a little bit about that, now that we have a little more information, we can kind of put that put that in there. But his was going to also allow other uses as well, which we may still want to do, as we're saying, um, this is not necessarily um, zoning for this project. It's for what we would like to see up there, um, but it could certainly accommodate this project. So we could also go that approach. So could I could I ask a point of clarity? So so are you saying that the MAPC document might have a height limit of say to match with the cell signaling 55 feet? So that would allow housing to be 55 feet? It, um, I think it allows, it would have a 55 foot, it would still have, um, um, it doesn't mean it's by right, it could still be by special permit. I haven't seen the regulations and I haven't identified whether it is for, if, if the footage is restricted to a use or not. But I would, I would think it would be an allowed use and then you would go from there or an allowed criteria. Christina? I'm just throwing this out there as an idea. I'm, I'm excited about the project. Is it feasible just to take what we have and add the requirements that you need just to make sure that we have something for town meeting just to make this easier and not as difficult add your use add your dimensional requirements and then revisit in the future I mean I think this is a great opportunity and I don't want to lose it if um for better words so uh, do we need to make this more difficult I mean we do have a lot of on our plate does it make sense to revisit the entire LCD in the fall and maybe just get the immediate requirements on the books now. Just an idea. So I, I don't think it's a I don't think it's a a, hard, a large lift to to change the requirements that um, that are being requested. I think they were pretty well laid out in the presentation they made today and in the in the letter from 2020. So I don't think it's a I don't think it's a, a hard lift to make those changes. I think there will no, be some negotiation. No, I completely negotiation. agree. That's what I'm saying. Maybe not go the MAPC route right now. Maybe just keep the language as it is, change the requirements, add the use, and maybe call it a day. I don't know. Um, Christine, I, I believe yeah. that's that's what they're suggesting. The, the key thing they're asking for is to make this an allowed use. That's the biggest the biggest thing, Mark can comment on this. And then beyond that, it's changing the parameters within the zoning district that we have, if I understand things correctly. We're not asking for it to be allowed as of right. Uh, right. We're, at, we're asking for an opportunity to prove our case so that we can get a special permit to do the project. Uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna have to uh, meet your requirements and convince you that it, it's a project that's going to benefit the abutters, the town, the, the, the owner, and we think we can do that. Exactly. So allowing the use avoids the need for a variance, and then it's all regulated through a special permit process, which is as it should be. So it's very much, I think, the way, Christine, you were, you were sort of saying, it's just adding this use, and then we modify the existing zoning district parameter, a dimensional I, I just didn't see that there was a big need to rewrite and recreate new regulations. I think for right. the time, that's all I was saying. Yeah. So that was sort of what I was thinking in terms of a two-part approach to the LCD. The first is these simpler uh, plug and play changes for lack of a better, you know, setbacks, heights, use. And then phase two, is when we is to continue to think about what additional uses we would allow there. So we have there's about another 40 acres there that has currently a Mac and a storage unit and other things, but might those one day be fill in the blank, <laughs> something else as well as or or the balance of the cell signaling 
property? What other uses might be allowed on that? So we're, that can be, it can be an iterative um, process, I guess. Because I think that some of those allowed uses, it's my opinion that some of those allowed uses will be controversial. So it sounds to me, this is Mary, it sounds like everybody's kind of saying the same thing that it seems like it, it could be a pretty simple process to bring to spring whenever town meeting to allow this use in our current regulations with some of these changes. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so there's I some think. just questions and clarification that, that I would like to, because as we were talking about this limited LCD, we had, it included the area on Upper School Street. It did not include the area over near the wastewater treatment facility. So that's where I'm just making sure um, what the applicants and clarification, I mean, that was originally our area that we were rezoning. So your request, is it now the land over off of pine also uh no uh we're, okay. we're so, not i mean this is that's my was kind of trying to clarify in the beginning of my question uh what we're actually uh asking is that the essentially you created an overlay for pine street for bio labs and it was never taken advantage of but if you look in your uh, in your use regulations uh in the limited commercial district you'll see that the uh, cell signaling use can be permitted by way of a special permit. And we're just looking to sort of pull that mm -hmm. same zoning over to the other side of, of uh, School Street. Correct. So okay. could we get a, I mean, if um, the Mark and, his colleagues are interested in proposing a uh, amendment to the zoning bylaws, then I think that would be something we could, it might be a good starting point um, and talk about it with, through our process that we just outlined with Mark Browski and potentially MAPC, we may want to go deeper or go uh, more comprehensive or, or whatever, but at least as a starting point, I think that would be in my mind would be a useful thing um, to do. I guess at, at this point, we have so much going on in the spring. I think this is a fantastic idea. I don't want to shock the voters and scare this project away. So for me, maybe just to minimal changes to the LCD right now, not to, um, to make sure that this happens. So I guess that's, that's my comment. I wouldn't want to change the LCD too much to scare the voters to mm, mm, discourage this project. We don't need to do that. Thank you. That's I think L LCD the was off the table, so I think the minimal changes would be best, in my opinion. Whatever you need to make this project happen, I think, in my opinion, all we should change in the LCD with all the other changes that we were looking to get through in the spring. Not to speak for Mark, but I think we'd be happy to, you know, take a pass at redrafting the various sections that would um, that would need to be changed to accommodate this. My rate is lower than Mark Wabrowski's. <laughs> How do we know that? You want to do some recodification help for us, Mark? <laughs> Okay, well, I think you got a, a real positive response from the board, uh, gentlemen. Um, I, and I like the idea, Peter, of suggesting a rewrite of, of what you would like to see and uh, get it to us as... Uh, can can we'll, I uh, just ask one follow-up question? Uh, you, you asked moments ago whether the, your board would consider designating a representative to work with us. Is that a possibility? Possibility. Mark, I'm happy to work with you. I'm not a board member, but I'll be okay. happy to, to do that as well. Oh, um, Sarah, <laughs> workaholic. <laughs> it'll be an easy. It'll be easier to review than to write. 
Okay. We, we just don't want to be reaching out to a, a board member without authority to do that. But if, for instance, if it's, if it's Sarah that was the board member and Sue, uh, if we can just keep our email communications and communications with them, that, that'll streamline the process. Um, I'll put my hat in the ring, if Ron. Uh... All right. So maybe uh, we'll have uh, Gary and Sarah be a contacts. If the board is amenable to that. That sounds good. Okay. Great. Gary and Sarah, can we, should we, or to the group, should we be aiming to have this, you know, ready for review for a meeting on the 19th? Are you trying to fit it into that schedule? I think we put it on the following one. We got enough to do on the 19th. Will that be the 24th? Uh, no, the um the meet the meeting after that. That's our zoning meeting. We could talk about it on the twenty fourth if we want to. The thirty first as the target. Um, I think that may we may want to also talk about a little bit on the twenty fourth. Um, I think Christine has made a very um, uh, you know, there's a case to be made for focusing on this particular use but that may not be the entire board's feeling. So I think that work, that strategy is worthy of discussion in my opinion. We need, we need to see what they propose. It may fit into that, obviously. So let's, let's plan on talking about a little bit on the 24th and the 31st. Okay. How is two weeks for you, Peter and Mark? Uh, uh, that's fine. Uh, uh, we should be able to get a draft together fairly quickly and uh, we'll circulate it and uh, we'll, we'll be available to get together if need be in advance, but uh, it's, it's fine. Uh, again, I apologize for throwing this on, on your table at the last minute, but uh, we, we didn't know that we had an opportunity until just last week. And Sarah, we should resolve to get anything in writing to the board, at least by the Friday before a meeting or the Thursday night before a meeting. So people yeah. can. Okay. Um, okay, that was more than 15 minutes, but it was good, good information. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you all. Yeah, great project. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's just finish up um, the planner's report. I think we went through most of it, Sue. Uh, any comments on the planner's report? I think it mostly dealt with the uh, blasting, right? You had a few. You're on mute. You know. Sorry, I'm just trying to get okay. it in front of me. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think there's a lot more to say. Um, we're still working. We're working on the applications for the local rapid recovery grant. Um, but those will take a while to get through, but we hope to have at least one um, application in, I think, by the 19th is our deadline, so. Ron, I had a couple questions. Mary? Um, just to remind that the there were some parking studies posted late um, that you had posted late, examples of the MAPC parking studies. Um, so we can compare like we had discussed prior, the $20,000 parking study versus the $50,000 parking study and kind of determine um, which direction we want to go with that. Ron? And, yes, ma'am. Oh, sorry, so, Mary, I thought you were finished. I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, and then I wanted to ask um, about the online permitting that kind of fell off the update. And um, if you have any updates on the town dashboard. Uh, so thanks. So first of all, I think that I had shared the parking studies um, 
previously, and I just want to make sure that neither of those are $20,000 studies. They're both $60,000 studies. Um, and what they do is they compare MAPC produced one of them, and then um, Nygaard produced the other, a well-known parking um, consultant. So um, those, are, those are available, but neither is a $20,000 study. Oh, so what, that. what would we be getting for 20,000? I can't even imagine. Oh, I thought that was what the, the MAPC amount was. MAPC will do it for 20,000 because they will, we will have a grant for that amount. So it would be the same as the $60,000 study. Um, so you're comparing basically just two um, consultant firms. It would be the same scope, generally the same scope. There was some question I think about MAPC's um, work. So they're, they're there for you to compare the work and the, the process um, that's outlined, what they give you for the, for the amount of money, so. So we, are we as a board still discussing if we wanna go the MAPC route or an independent consultant? Um, no. You're, you're welcome to do that, but uh, the budget is, um, there's only $20,000 in the budget at this point. Okay. Um, um, Oh, excuse me. We think we voted that issue um, already to, uh, that was in the November, the minutes we were asked to review for today, we voted to approve Sue's budget for 20,000 for a parking study. Yeah, no, I, I know that. I thought there was still a, que a question left open even though, um, and I thought it was even in the minutes that we were, it was kind of to, to do that, but we would still discuss what the scope of the the parking study was going to be. I'm just trying to find my minutes. But anyway, um, the just about the online permitting and then the dashboard. So it's, the online permitting is something that I hope to get to work in on this quarter and get it up and running. Um, I'm hoping. <laughs> um, there's a lot on my plate, so but I'm hoping to do that. The other question you had was on the dashboard software. Oh, on the dashboard. So a dashboard, my understanding is that a dashboard had been created um, and it was being reviewed, but I have provided all the information necessary. So I'm not sure why it isn't up and running or if there's still um, tweaking format or um, I'm not sure why it's not updated, but that's something that um, I, did, I provided all the information, but um, Sue Croft has been working on with Greg. So my understanding that it was, was nearly ready to go. Okay, thanks. Yep. Okay, thanks Sue. Laura? Yeah, uh, yeah just on the parking study. I, I do recall that we talked last time, there were some kind of open questions that were raised about other criteria that might be in the parking, such as EV parking, you know, needs and um, capabilities, possibilities for shared or pooled parking, um, you know, sort of parking efficiency. Where does, does MAPC provide that or can they include that in their scope? Yes, and so in the scope that we have, they would provide that thing. What they, what they probably wouldn't provide is a full breakdown. Like if we wanted cost meter, if we, want, we decided meters, they wouldn't do a full breakdown of what the costs were or what we could hope to generate that's right. beyond their okay. scope. But certainly identifying um, um, parking management strategies okay. um, and all that would be in there. Yeah. That seems like and I'm happy to Yeah, I'm happy to hear your, your thoughts on that because right now we're just kind of, they're figuring out, I haven't gotten written confirmation that they're going to do it, but I have meeting, I am meeting with, um, with the which what is what is expected to be the project manager i think on the 19th okay so as far as a model if we wanted to comment or just ask questions look at the maynard study as a as a kind of template yeah yep uh, either yeah either that is yes that one was from mapc and um yeah happy to have you share your comments um with me directly to to talk to the to add it to make sure that it's on their radar as well. 
or is there a way that we could just do the, um, I see these are PDFs. Can we do some kind of comment in the SharePoint so that sure. we can, you know, multiple members of us might just have comments to make on it. We can all share those. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks. Yep. Do you have a deadline by when you need those comments? Um, I don't have a deadline. Um, I'm trying to, it's not, I have a new planner. I still do the old fashioned way with paper, but um, I don't have it in my book yet. So I think I'm meeting with them this week. So um, I'll kind of have an idea of when we'll um, be looking at a fuller scope next after that meeting. So I don't have a deadline yet, but. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Sue. Um, subcommittee and liaison reports. I will just uh, mention that the CPC, uh, we're meeting on the 13th and to vote on projects that came in for next year. Anyone else have any um, um, reports on their subcommittees or liaisons? Chris, anything on housing? Uh, no, the Affordable Housing Trust is meeting next, the 18th. Okay, with <laughs> us. <laughs> so I'll, I'll provide a report after that meeting. Okay, thank you. Uh, last, I have um, the approval of the minutes for November 22nd. Uh, has that, has that everyone had a chance to review them and are there any comments? They're not in our folder today, are they? Did they live in a different place? Sorry, they must have been in, on this. They were in last, they must be in the, the December uh, folder, I would believe. They were in the in last meetings folder and um, I read them and thought they were fine. So I will move to approve them. I just a have a couple, couple Mary? points. Um, on page two, and it might just be that I'm reading this incorrectly, the second paragraph, it says, um, would require a, a BOH permit as it is between, and spelled out 100 and 50 feet, but is matched with Title V. I didn't know what that meant. So I... I don't know if I'm just not, re I, it just didn't make any sense to me. Um, and then Laura had pointed out on the December 13th meeting, which I listened to, I wasn't able to attend that the, on page three, it says the downtown, the strategic plan is $75. Yes, thanks, Mary. I think that was supposed to be 75,000. Yeah. And, um, and then uh, just a very minor one on the, page one after the date, there's an extra comma. Okay, so Sarah, would you amend your uh, your um, yep. motion to as amended? Sure, I'm just wondering what we should do about the, um, that uh, I'm trying to find it to the- That sentence? That sentence that's unclear. Um, Cause this had to do with the, um, the summer street palm and driveway. Um, yeah, it just, did, it didn't make any sense to me. Let's see if we can figure it out. It's Cause because it was, they were taken by Gail, right? Gail, yeah. I think so. Do you see where I'm saying the second paragraph yeah. on page two? Try to find them. I guess what Sarah is looking, if if I may ask, um, the planning board hasn't posted meeting minutes since September 27th. Yeah, that's uh, a uh, yeah that was pointed out to me by Helene today. I don't know what's. I was going to follow up with Sue tomorrow on that. Do you know what's going on with that in, with town or uh, how, how do I? Uh, follow up on that. I don't know, have have the minutes been approved? They've been approved, the October minutes have been approved but they're not up there. Um, do you, I don't know what, do you, Gail. Does she send them, does she know to send them Sharon's hands up maybe, rather Sarah? than I guessing Sharon may be able to tell us. Um, I didn't know that she had not 
put those minutes up yet. I will do that tomorrow first thing. Thank you, Sharon. And Sharon, what about the December 13 minutes? Are they ready for uh, us to look at yet? Um, they will be tomorrow. Okay, thank you. If you could put them on the SharePoint in the uh, meeting folder for the 24th. I will do that. Thank you. And for the recodification, I've done several recodifications, and usually town council helps out with the rewriting of a lot of the um, of the um, bylaws. Have we reached out to town council? Well, we've been uh, using um, Mark Bobrowski. Um, okay. That's As a good suggestion. Advice, but um, we have not involved them to this point. Um, I did ask uh, Greg and Alan Wilson um, about using about how much time town council needed for review of the articles before town meeting when I asked them for time frames. But um, why don't that's a good suggestion. Maybe we could take at least some of them and have them do them and not have to involve Mark. Chris, why don't we look at that list and like some of them. So the, uh, that budget would not be from the 10,000? Yeah, or probably. Where would that come from? You might, you might want to check need with special, the, We'll check with we, Greg. We yeah. need to fill out a form whenever we want to engage town council. Mm -hmm. So um, let me know and I can push that up to the- And maybe we board. don't save any money. Right. That's right. <laughs> um, back on the minutes, I think that the Board of Health permit is um, th that if we switch the minutes, because did we vote those yet? No. Um, if we switch them to between, if we change the order, it's currently it's between 150, 100 and 50 feet. If we change it to, I think the issue is, is between 50 and 100 feet of the resource um, and it therefore needs a permit. And I'm not sure it's germane to our common driveway. Um, I don't think it's that important for our understanding of the issue, which is ours, which is the common driveway. It was an informal common driveway discussion. So why don't we just strike it? That's what yeah. I was going to say. Just take it out. If we right. Don't know okay. So take out from however the test for lot one would require a board of health permit. Uh, always perk tests require a board of health permit um, as it's between 150, 150 feet, which is a match with title five. How about just say lot one would require a board of health permit period. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So which means, um, um, move, move as amended. Yes. Mm -hmm. So there's a motion to approve the minutes as amended. Is it seconded? I'll second it. Uh, roll call vote, Ms. Creighton. Yes, and I've highlighted that deletion, uh, Sharon, in yellow. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Ms. Delicio? Yes. Ms. Foley? Yes. Mr. Gilbert? I was absent, I believe. Mr. Olney? Yes. You know what? I think I was absent too. You okay. were. Yeah. <laughs> now that you said that, yep. Miss Tenney? I was absent. Uh, vote, uh, chair votes. Yes. Okay. Um, anything else anyone has to bring up to the to for us? Um, um, Sarah, I'm suggest, I'll make a suggestion that you run as uh, vice chair of the meetings on the 19th, 31st, and 7th. Would you mind sharing those? That's fine. Okay. I will continue to chair the uh, main meetings. Okay. Ron? Yes. Sue. Are, you, are you asking Sharon to, uh, to attend those meetings to take minutes? Well, I was going to get with I was gonna, yeah, I was going to get with you on that. Is that uh, something we, we can do? Um, if Sharon is not available, um, I can do it. Okay, 
Sharon, are you available on the 19th, 31st, and, or February 7th to attend the recodification meetings? Yes, as far as I know. That'd be okay. great. Case, case closed. Ron, With I've that, got one thing. Yes, Mr. Gilbert. Since we all have so much free time in our hands, um, <laughs> um, I don't know if Sue Brown has enough time, but I think it might be a good idea for me to talk with her and maybe start working up just some bulk numbers of the potential impact. And um, there's different things we could work up initially about this new half mile from the railroad station um, um, zoning change or overlay that may, we may need to put in place. Uh, I think people need to see what you know, examples of what 15 units per acre looks like, you know, how much land is there? How many acres are there? You know, get some, get our brains around it a little bit. I mean, we could work on that slowly. Uh, maybe Sue, possibly. We do, we do have to work on it. I don't know if Chris wants to throw his hat in the ring too. I know he's given it some thought. <laughs> yeah, my, my view is that until we get those regulations, I think we could comment on regulations would be a good, useful thing to do. But until we have the regulations, we'd just be our wheels, I think. But Gary's idea of, of what are the implications of the proposed regulations would allow us to make a better informed comments on the regulations. So the would have this implication and therefore we say, oh, that's not an implication we want. Well, the part of the problem is the regulations are self-contradictory in places. Mm -hmm. So you're not even sure what you're, what you're designing to. It, it, that's true, Chris, but it would be helpful to know if we have um, 10,000 acres there or how many acres we have. It would be helpful to know because we can draw a half mile circle from the train station. Oh, It'd sure, be helpful to know that. how many zoning districts does it touch? What's the existing land uh, building coverage in there? It'd be nice to know some, some then, site then, analysis you're talking about. So, so just, just to show you how complicated this is, the zoning district itself doesn't have to be all within a half a mile of the train station. It just, some of it has to be, and some of it can be a mile away, and it doesn't have to be all contiguous either. You can have sort of outlying areas as long as they're within a mile. So it's, you know, it, you'd just be kind of spinning your wheels, I think. I think general philosophical, you know, discussions about where we could be okaying some sort of multifamily in downtown, maybe that's useful, yeah. And I think the easy thing to say is, yeah, we'll take the general district and allow multifamily housing in it and maybe extend it out a few places, but I don't so know could what I, to do. Could I tag on to that and ask who, whomever is going to take this over that, that we first get town numbers of um, in, in these certain areas within a half mile, how many multifamily units we currently have, um, you know, whether we kind of want to cluster in that area to begin with. And I think FinCom really should weigh in on this as well, um, just for some number crunching purposes with schools and um, those impacts. And I think it does merit um, reviewing the um, Housing Choice in Initiative Local Capital Projects and MASH Works grants and see what kind of monies we get or would potentially get from that and see if it, if if, again, if the town really wants to do this, I mean, it's, it's, it's an option. Some of that information can easily be gotten through the assessor's database. Um, as, as to grant money, um, Sue could give us some information on that. I, I think there's some preliminary information we could start to amass. So we get a little bit of our brain. And do we have an example in town of 15 units per acre anywhere? or what's our densest acre. It'd be not that easy to figure out, but we could poke around. Um, people need to visualize this a little bit. So Newport Park is 38 units on two acres. So that's about, that's a little more than 15 units per acre. Right. But so the, inter interestingly, oh, sorry. I was gonna say, interestingly enough, the Affordable Housing Trust in its CPA agreement agreed that for other than um, redevelopment of the MHA parcels that they would limit their projects to about 15 units an acre. So obviously we have looked at this amount and didn't feel at least in the 
housing author house, affordable housing trust thought that was an unreasonable clustering of units um, that would fit with town character. So I, I agree with you, Gary, it's not, um, we can do some preliminary research, but I also know that we've got to, we do need to get through the regulations and figure what they are. I think they can jump all over the place for a while. And I don't think that, I don't think the impacts the potential impacts of what 750 units um, makes any sense to look at because I don't think there's ever going to, there, there won't ever be that. It's available land, but it won't be redeveloped. Um, and, and the MBTA isn't, or the legislation doesn't, doesn't really ask you to look at what are those impacts. Um, although for, for, for Mary, if she's say, suggesting that we do that just to see if it's worth it to um, to go forward with creating it, I, I, I would accept that point. <laughs> well, I think we do have to consider, I mean, you know, this, this is a developer's dream in the sense that if a property comes on the market within that district and you can put in 15 units, um, they're going to jump at it. So I don't think it's, we're going to get to 750 and I don't think we're going to get drastically overnight, but over time, there will be an impact. And I think we have to be cognizant of that. But Mary, you need a one acre to do 15 units and there aren't that many one acre parcels in the general district. Well, yeah, and that's what I'm not clear about with this law. I mean, it says, you know, by right 15 units per acre, but if somebody owns a half an acre within that area or a quarter of an acre, what does that mean? I don't know. Eight units. Yeah. There, are, there are some up this way, uh, Chris, uh, up here in this uh, area on the other side of the tracks. There's a yeah, lot of large the other, parcels. The, the other side of the tracks, are you talking about Masconoma Street? Correct. I don't, or think, I don't Street. think we're going to be putting multifamily housing by right on Masconoma Street. Correct. But to, Christy, to Mary's point, if, uh, we might not think that was the right thing to do, but if a acre parcel comes up and is in the is in that zone, a developer could come and decide mm -hmm. that they're going to do well, that. We well, could we leave it out. We, we could leave it out. We create the zone. We create the yeah. zone. It's not going to include that. Yeah. Right. Well, I yeah. might not. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's going to impact some some rinks, you know, single family residence districts, and I and you know that that changes, um, you know, what people have bought into. So. I mean, I think there's there's many facets to this, and again, I don't think there's going to be 750 units overnight. But um, especially crunching it into the downtown area, there will be impacts. Of course, there will be impacts. It's not, that's an absolute given. There will be impacts. It's a question of accommodating it and suggesting perhaps which portions of which zoning districts we'd like to have this bleed into. I mean, obviously, we don't want to see 15 units per acre in in the Smith's Point area, even though it's within a chunk of it's within half a mile. It's a question of where might our options be. And they talked about a density ratio that there, it would apply to half an acre or whatever lot size you've got. We have a lot of quarter acre and half acre lots in town. Um, but it we would probably want to uh, mold this into certain districts and certain portions of those districts. And that's what we should start to anticipate. Yeah, I mean, the current regulations say that, you know, unless there's hardship, um, if, if there's hardship, 50% of the, the 50 acres or some such thing can be somewhere else, but the bulk of it needs to be within that half mile. Um, and I would assume, you know, obviously they take out town, town owned land and parking lots and all that. So if you do a, a layover of a map and you see 50 acres, that might include a lot of land that's actually not even buildable. So you've got to keep, yeah, moving it further and further. Uh, yeah, all of that. Yeah. yeah, I guess all of that, Mary. Yeah, that's right. But just because you're zoning it as an allowed use doesn't mean it's going to happen. There's no also, might it, might it overlay with areas of town like the downtown where we want some multifamily housing to happen, you know, second floor development over retail, yes, transit oriented right. development. It's exactly. Not and parking, exactly. you know, that parking exactly. has to be brought really quickly into the question. If we allow four or five story buildings or who knows what downtown, we get parking out of it. Um, that would be woven into the regulation. Sure. 
potentially if it's transit oriented development, it might have different rules about how much parking is required. But we as a town may want to try to get some gain yeah. out of this. If we have to allow the density, we want to get some things. Well, I think we have to just watch about have to allow the density. It's not a bad <laughs> word. We're talking about downtown. We want our retailers to survive. I agree. We want I agree. to have a thriving downtown. Yeah. So I, let's just not go into this like it's a bad thing. I mean, I think it's an opportunity to oh, I mean, don't think look it's a bad at it. Thing at all, as long as we pre plan for it and do it soberly and as wisely as we can, we have a win. A win. I think we just have to get away from this idea that they're mandating 750 units. Yeah, it's not, the math doesn't pencil out. You can't, you can't build that. I mean, it's yeah, exactly. physically impossible if we got a harbor. So you just have to overlay it and, you know, account for the parts that are water <laughs> and other, other constraints. So I have sent the, I have sent the um, invite to the, to the webinar on Wednesday, if anyone wants to join me, I'd be happy to see you there. Uh, thank you. So one thing, last thing on this 40A, what do we owe the state in May? You said just the plan of the plan, or do we have to do some work? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to have to read it again. I think that might be the piece that they're trying to figure out if you have the capacity to, to, um, to tackle this project. I have to read, I'll have to reread it, or perhaps I'll go over that in the, um, um, in the, in the webinar. So I, I can't answer you right now. Ron, it's just a, it's just like a, a something like six to eight questions that's on the, on the website um, that the town just needs to fill out. It's kind of like a, almost a multiple choice with a few places for sentences. Oh, okay. I thought we had to come up with a whole plan. No, that, that's by May. By the end of the year, you have to have a plan. That's just by May. A plan for the plan. Mm -hmm. What so does I, that mean? I was do looking at the webinar and I, I have a conflict at that time, but they do say they'll record it. Yes. So I don't know if maybe we can just, you know, get the link and uh, yeah, I, I will definitely, watch their comments. Yeah. I'll definitely share the link after. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, guys, we've got a lot of work ahead of us and a good, good meeting. And I'll take a motion to adjourn for temporarily until we meet again. I'll move. We'll see a lot of each other. <laughs> Move we adjourn. Seconded. Here, here. Okay. Ms. Creighton? Yes. Ms. Delicio? Yes. Ms. Foley? Yes. Mr. Gilbert? Yes. Mr. Olney? Yes. And Ms. Tenney? Yes. Okay. See you next week. Good night. Thank you Good night. all. Thank you, Sue. Thanks.